Hello, everybody. Ken Plum here with another edition of Force 5, where I have an incredible guest on, and we talk about their collecting journey. Uh, at the same time, we're going to talk about their five favorite, in this case, Star Wars collectibles from any any line, any size, any scale, whatever. It's their choice. There might be some honorable mentions, uh, and, and that's the show. It's about a conversation. It's about hopefully you all enjoying that conversation, and I hope you enjoy my guest, who is known as One Six Shooter, Trevor Williams, how are you doing? Welcome to the show. Good, man. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Uh, it's an honor to be here. Uh, I love I love the show. I, and I, I love, love Star Wars. So. I love your yeah. photography. Uh, it, Thank it, you, sir. It shames my mediocre skills when it comes to attempting to <laughs> photograph my own figures. Uh, so uh, know <laughs> well, that know that you 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 make us all less in comparison well, to I mean, the work that you do. It's a, ho I mean, it's it's more than a hobby for me at this point. So, um, I, you know, I put, a, I maybe put a little more effort and certainly more money into it. So <laughs> than most people. So that, that has been a barrier so that, that to helps a lot a of little my bit. aspirations. Uh, when it comes mm -hmm, to that, so, you know what? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Maybe a light box is just fine. Maybe I don't need a whole scene. Maybe I could just have people imagine that there's a whole <laughs> world around these figures as long as they're posed yeah. and lit somewhat well. Let me tell you something. The I mean, you probably know this, but the in-hand picks and the just the in-package pictures do vastly better than some of these, you know, beautifully, you know, set up scenes and renders. So you, you just hold it in your hand, and you'll probably get a lot more uh, likes than I do on an average <laughs> uh, shot. <laughs> but sad but true. Art isn't about likes, is what I hear people say. No, no, <laughs> money. Maybe, but not likes. Yeah. No, I don't know. It's no, it's it's getting something out. I mean, the whole reason I started doing this is uh, you know, I had the collection. Obviously the collection came first, and um I thought I was making something up that was new. Like I was sharing photos of a lot of the one six stuff to um to some forums, and as I was like editing the photos, just the the shelfies, um, I'm like, you know what, I could do a lot more with these. I could put them on backgrounds put them in scenes and pose them really cool. <laughs> and I started doing that. And then uh, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to use that Instagram account that I never used. And I had a couple of pictures of my dog on or something. And I went on there and started posting and then suddenly looked up toy photography. And I'm like, oh, this is a thing. <laughs> there were people doing this already. Uh, it was it was kind of shocking. Um, so yeah, I dove uh, head first into it after that. It was, uh, you know, just to creative outlet, a way to be, you know, I've always been an artist. I wanted to be a comic book artist or a director, uh, neither of which things came to be. Um, but this way I get just to do a hobbyist kind of with the camera. Were you always just snapping photos and enjoying composition? I and... am old enough to be art. Yes. Drawing. Yes. Uh, I was, I was pretty good. If I had been faster, I probably could have been a com good comic book artist, but I just, I'm way too slow. That's the secret um, of comic book artist is, it is a slow process that people don't appreciate how much yeah. time it actually takes. So you would not be the only one who would have struggled with it or continues to struggle with a deadline to make a monthly book, let's say. Yeah. Uh, the problem with that is if you don't, um, you don't get called back and you don't make any money. So like I decided <laughs> there's a lot of fill to go into graphic design. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, become a cover artist. There you go. That would be good. That would be great. Um, yeah. So uh, I, I was, I'm old enough to have grown up with uh, in school, we did uh, film cameras. I mean, we had digital cameras, but they were very rudimentary, uh, low, you know, pixel count and uh, just, you know, those early digital cameras. So, you know, you had to go into the dark room, you had to, um, you know, use chemicals. And I hated that. I, I hated photography, <laughs> hated it. So didn't do much of it in college uh, and was only forced to do it kind of like for product photography uh, in my regular job. So uh, that's I really had to really kind of relearn the camera uh, when I started getting into this. So, yeah. Now, what aspect of that physical side was it just not knowing? Because obviously, while you're sitting down and you're drawing something by hand, you are seeing as it is being realized. You're able to make adjustments. You're able to instantly get the the feedback of this is what this looks like as it is happening and what I'm going towards and adjusting for the goal that I have. 
photography, like you said, at that point is <laughs> you shoot it and you hope and you might get back into the, the dark room and suddenly find out that all your aspirations were for naught because your exposure was that wrong. Is exactly it. That is exactly well, it. Yeah, you're back it then you had to be really sure. From where it should have been to get the angle That's you it. wanted. Yeah, it's frustrating, and it's a lot of work to get to that point, too, before you learn that you've messed everything up, and it stinks. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> and film costs money, and, 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 and developing takes time. Yeah, and when you're, you know, I mean, I just, it, it didn't inspire me to go out and, like, I mean, you know, every kid in every class was doing, you know, graveyards and, you know, a mountain range, and I'm like, I, there's got to be something else tomorrow. to do here get your cameras We're yeah yeah up. exactly exactly <laughs> exactly so i don't know i was a little bored with that and uh yeah drawing drawing was was more my thing so um i stuck to that yeah so were digital cameras then a revelation when you when you dove back in and could see that you could get the results yeah, you after... wanted on a better timeline yeah, uh, unfortunately, what I was doing was kind of filling in for, uh, you know, clients who basically couldn't afford a professional photographer for their product photography. So we would take it in our, our rudimentary uh, uh, photography room uh, at the agency I worked at at the time and, um, you know, do what, we, do what we could do. But it was it was pretty amazing that you could, you know, you could get that stuff, adjust it, and you could get a pretty decent you know, shot out of that. I mean, I still didn't know what I was doing in terms of like really lighting products. Well, you know what I mean? But luckily we weren't doing like jewelry or, you know, eyewear or anything like that. It was, it was pretty simple stuff. So, um, but yeah, it was, it was a revelation man. the, the, uh, the, uh, just the, the quality of it. Uh, and it's, I mean, it's gotten vastly better even since then that was 10, 15 years ago. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's incredible. Oh, I mean, just looking at the, the lighting rigs that you use and how expensive mm -hmm. not existent they would have been to have the sort of small, otherwise you'd be burning a hole in your product. Yeah. LED. Well, yeah. I mean, the, uh, advent of small LEDs and stuff like that. And, and the fact that they're pretty much I mean, they're not made for that necessarily. I mean, you know, drones use them, uh, but they're almost made for toy photography. You know, they're I mean, just the you perfect could have size. Nearly every to... color in a little cube. As That's it. To too. RGB out now. Gels and yeah, all those. And you can buy them for thirty, forty dollars now, uh, tops. You know what I mean? Like, uh, so when when I started this in in about twenty fifteen. Um, like I said, there were people doing it, um, but there weren't a lot of people sharing like what their equipment was and stuff. And now I see people coming out of the gate, like just smashing it, like amazing work. You know what I mean? They've learned from everybody who's gone before, who's done, you know, behind the scenes work, or maybe seen some of my videos on YouTube or someone else's videos on YouTube, uh, about, you know, how to do this stuff. And they just come out with a, a vastly, uh, better knowledge than than i did when i was just jumping into it and well also not, and not and having in front of the millennium cost Falcon. and not having to oh, yeah. worry about oh, that yeah. is you can shoot endlessly and tweak and tweak and tweak and move a light move a light get it here get that aspect get that a little more atmosphere that you mm -hmm. want there move that figure more not have to worry i used 50 rolls of film to get this one shot <laughs> that's right <laughs> yeah. oh man it would be costly holy cow yeah i mean yeah i take i mean each shot there are times when I take three or more, 300 or more shots just for, because I use a lot of fog in my shots. So uh, that's a variable that you really can't control. But yeah, just moving lighting, moving a hand. Or just uh, having a digital a LED screen on the camera, seeing in real yeah. time what you're capturing, as opposed to if you were just looking through a lens, you still didn't know what the film was capturing. You just knew what you Ex were looking exactly. through the lens and seeing. Yep. And with mirrorless cameras, you can you can see even more. You can see, you know, the depth that you're putting into the you're adjusting in the camera, you know, which which wasn't possible before mirrorless. So, really, uh, yeah, it's just getting better and better. It's it's amazing. So let's talk about the collecting journey then. What what do you what was okay. your earliest collection that you can remember being fixated on as a kid? <laughs> now, is that your original this case, is filled. Or, is, or is that a, is that a, my original case? filled with my original figures um with i will be, i am proud to say most almost all the guns i don't think i'm missing any guns i was uh 
a little uh, anal retentive as a kid. <laughs> I got really upset <laughs> uh, if I lost a, a stormtrooper gun out in the grass. And that's, you know, that's where you played with them out in the grass. Um, so I was really careful to make sure that everything came back at the end of the day, at the end of a, a play period. Were you uh, a sharer with other kids? Or something or were like you that. very attentive when somebody else was? I was... I was, yeah, you bring your own, man. Yeah. <laughs> like, my brothers are one thing, but yeah, neighbor kids, nah, I don't know. Why don't you I'm hand that sure. back? You're going to tear that cape. That's a little bit. Yeah, of I mean, I, I played with kids who, and I'm sure, like, you know, like, who would, like, put, you know, take the firecrackers and put it in between their legs and blow them up or throw them up in the trees with a parachute. I'm like, no, these are. No, I was even like thinking about them as collectibles even then. I just not caring for them in in card or anything like that. But right. so you weren't sadly. creating like a mud planet uh, in your backyard. Uh, I, I mean, if I did, they were washed carefully afterwards. <laughs> so you, know. <laughs> you were smashing them um, under rocks. Like, oh no, it's a no, landslide. No, the one thing I did do, and I still have this figure. I have two of them now, thankfully. But uh, the Han Solo, and I have I have the small head Han Solo. Uh, I drew a beard on him with a like a blue ballpoint you're pen, gonna have and to that is us. still you're gonna have to permeating. Show okay. And also ballpoint. Now you bring up ballpoint, ballpoint. And Han Solo. Yeah. I've I've told this before. This was my first attempt at a a figure fix and customizing. Was uh-huh. my my best bin Han Solo. Uh, the eyes mm-hmm. wore away, the pupils. And I thought, oh, yeah. well, yeah. I could draw them back on with this ballpoint pen. So it looked like he was something out of Event Horizon <laughs> when I was done with him. <laughs> it was the most disturbing yeah. sight to see these just eyeless socket black abyss holes <laughs> in my Bespin Han Solo. And it put yeah. me off customization <laughs> for many years. <laughs> I can understand that. I can understand that. All point um, leads. Yeah, so here's here's uh, if I can get some focus here. Come on, Sony, focus up. See it? It's, so it's worn that, away. So was this, you were capturing but it is, basically it is the, definitely Han, there. the uh, Indiana Jones look for Han Solo. Yeah, so now it's scruff. I mean, it was pretty deep, and then I tried to wash it off, and of course, it's ballpoint pen on plastic. Yeah. Permeable plastic. It's not coming <laughs> off. <laughs> so... So now he's got, yeah, that, he could be my uh, Indiana worse, Jones though. custom, I suppose. And at least he yeah. still has his eyes. So you're, he does you're still one have his eyes. On yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. And that's the small head um, Han Solo, I, right? That's not the big head Han. Yeah, I have two of the small head Han Solos. Uh, my brother had the big hand head Han Solo, and I, I hated it. I was like, this this looks terrible. I mean, I, like, I'm like, there's no, I think he wanted to trade at one point. I'm like, no. No, now, were your I parents like very on board with the idea that they had to double up the purchases for you and your brother? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, we were we were well taken care of in that that regard. I mean, we I don't you know as kids like we you know this was the seventies and eighties. So I mean, I miss the turtles and things like that. So there wasn't a lot of toys. I mean, there were a lot of toys, but there weren't a lot of toys based on. Uh, things like that until later on, you know, Buck Rogers and Star Trek and stuff like that. The Migos, we had all the superhero Migos and things like that. But yeah, we had a share the Death Star. You know, we had a share the Millennium Falcon. You know what I mean? But we got them. So like, I can't complain about that. We got to play with them. Um, has but sometimes we now. doubled up. Uh, you know what? I don't know where those are. Those are, uh, I think my younger brother may have... Uh, I say absconded. He didn't abscond with them. They they were left behind. So like you know whatever he did with them, he did with them. They may still be there at my parents' house. I have no idea. That's a whole other can of worms right there. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, but we didn't double up too much. We kind of shared. But I mean, at a certain point when we could you know earn some money doing chores and stuff, and we wanted to go out and buy our own, we would buy what we wanted. You know, so right. And also um, not fighting over yeah. the super popular characters like. You know, you you get Luke and I get Han, and yeah, exactly. Now, claiming, if we played claiming. Star Wars, I had to be Han and he had to be Chewie or Luke. Uh, I had to be Han. Was... <laughs> so you assign his roles. Yeah, I was I was the oldest, so like, yeah, that was that's my right. That's my right. Being the <laughs> so that was the first thing he did was go out and get his own Han. Like, I'm gonna be Han. I'm gonna have my own Han. I'm gonna have my own <laughs> Han adventures. 
probably. He did. Ha- he had the Chewy gun. He had the whole Kenner. Like that was a cool. That was a cool gun, man. The uh, it was a Chewy gun. It was the Stormtrooper gun. I think he used, and I used the Han Solo one. So, did he also get the figure? Uh, band good band times, though, man. I don't know if we had the figure bandolier. I don't remember that, so I'm gonna say we didn't. We didn't get that one. Yeah, that's you cool. Have, you have the though. Vader case. Did either of you have the C-3PO case? No, I don't think we got the C-3PO case either. I think I I, I might have been the only one with the. Oh no, we got the original vinyl cases. I remember those. The matchbox so we had those. style. Exactly. Vinyl exactly. box. Uh, and I think we each had one of those. And then I don't know for some reason I got the Vader case and I don't know. I know what happened after that. It's all a blur. <laughs> well, you were the first out the door, so you got to take whatever you wanted and what was left. Yeah, and I pretty to... much just walked away with the Vader case. I got to be honest; like there wasn't a whole lot else that I took. I mean, I had X wings. Uh, you know, we had the snow speeders. I uh, my biggest regret, my biggest collecting regret, maybe to this day, even. Um, well, the, this so the Cantina set, uh, which you're well aware of, um, from Sears. I got that for Christmas, um, and that came as a benefit, and I will talk about that later on uh, during the top five. Um, but I also was naive enough to uh, agree with a friend of mine, I thought he was a friend, to trade the blue snaggletooth for a snowspeeder, which at the time I thought was a great deal. Getting a vehicle for Like a I came home breaking, of, of bragging of this. Like I'm like, and my parents were like, you know what you're doing? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Can we talk about I got a snow speeder the, for a little the, tiny figure. The trade that kids had at that time of oh, back yeah. and forth. Because parents oh, yeah. paid good money for these things, and we do the most ridiculous one-sided <laughs> trades. <laughs> mm-hmm. Back and yeah. forth. Sometimes mm-hmm. we'd be on the, the higher end. Sometimes we'd be on the lower end. But we do these ridiculous. I remember trading all of my GIGs yeah. for a Megatron. Oh, wow. Yeah, I know. You know, you did. You liked your your friend's chicken sandwich that day. Looked pretty good. You know, hey, I got this. Uh, you know, hammerhead. You wanna, you wanna what do you say? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Chirpa for chicken. That's pretty good. I it was also an idea. age of I don't know if you encountered this. A lot of found figures. Like you'd just be walking along, yeah. and there'd be like you know a Luke in the gutter, and suddenly yeah. you had oh, yeah. a Luke. Or you'd lose your Luke, and suddenly some other kid had a mm-hmm. Luke that they found in a field. Yeah, there were communal like playgrounds and things like that that had the sandbox or something like that, that you'd go and play in, and inevitably something would get buried in that sandbox, and you'd forget that my it was there. Cobra so just Commander, do a little digging before you start playing, and there you go. <laughs> my armored, my 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 face mask, Cobra Commander, uh, which was impossible to get off the shelf after the first few years, I found That's in right. the woods. The mask had worn away. I used a silver crayon to replace it, and then that was my Cobra Commander. It was just a, a woods find underneath leaves that I was. That's a little bit of blue <laughs> in the woods, and suddenly I have a Cobra Commander. Wow, so okay, so maybe that find. customization did work. <laughs> I yeah, made up for there that you go. A little bit. <laughs> that's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's a good find. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the, the the sort of black market that we all had as kids with the trades was rather ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, it was it was crazy. And and you know, um I mean again, I was a little tight with that stuff, but I thought I was getting over on him. Uh, and yet you and, didn't even take you know, that snow speeder when when you left with your case of figures. I didn't even take the snow speeder when I left. No. I think I think it brought back bad memories afterwards. I think it uh, there was something about it that it didn't feel right anymore. You knew it because was. I have every other figure from that Cantina set except that blue snaggletooth, and that Do you think that kid now adult still has that snaggletooth? Do you think it made it to their adulthood? You, That's a good question. So your That's blue an interesting snaggletooth thing. is out there somewhere. Do you remember the kid that you traded it to? I vaguely remember his face, and I probably could recall his name under hypnosis, but right now I don't. I don't remember who it was. Um, he was an acquaintance. He wasn't even like a good friend. I mean, you know, he was a friend, but he wasn't. Well, it was a, a business friend. transaction. Uh, it didn't obviously. have to be a good It was a business <laughs> transaction. Yeah, exactly. I don't even know how we found out that I, I must have been. That's the other thing. Like, shut your mouth. Like, I, I must have been bragging about this thing on the on the playground, the cantina set or something like that. And this kid knew. I don't even know how he knew at the time. Like, back then, 
There was it no was only maybe uh, I mean Empire was out at that point. Obviously there were snow speeders. Um, but that's three years later. Like there weren't a lot of like magazines. There was, you know, Star Log, but they weren't really talking about the figures. But they would have like, known. Hey, if you get it, a blue snaggletooth, you, but know, you, you can't could, get this you anywhere see else. It in the stores, though. I mean, the one thing about that Kenner line is that right. the bulk of the line was still on shelves. They might right. have gone, hey, I've never seen the blue one. I've seen the red one. And if I want a complete collection, I need this blue one and I can't see it in stores. I've never seen it in a store. He has yep. this blue one. You want a snow speeder? I may have even brought it to school like an idiot. I uh, that's you know that was dangerous too, you know, because I could have dropped it out of my pocket for sure. Highest bidder. We have a Tauntaun <laughs> from Billy. We have a snow speeder <laughs> from Jack. Exactly. Well, <laughs> that's what I should have done. I should have held a like a playground auction for the blue yeah, snack. You could have got the Millennium Falcon out come of up it. Way... You, you went too low. Yeah. <sighs> I was stupid. Regret. I was stupid. Yeah. So have mm-hmm. you ever gotten a replacement since then? Just for the collection. I've thought about it, but it feels like it feels it hurts to have to spend the money to buy something that I had. Or you can just find <laughs> was, that adult that was... who may not care. It may be to think that that could be in a box in an attic right now. <laughs> David Carr. My God, it just came to me. David Carr. David <laughs> I knew, Carr. I knew if you're would. out there, I knew it would. Watching this right now, and you still have my blue snaggle tooth. One of I the few you... childhood friends. <laughs> Yes, I'll right. trade you back a snow speeder. <laughs> you still remember me if you still have the blue snack with you. That would be amazing. Oh my god, that would be incredible. If that was the if he put forward, hey, I've got your, your blue snaggle tooth, but I want my original snow speeder back. Do you think you could find it? Would that would that encourage you to try and find out what happened to it? I would ask my your, brother. See could if that be in your brother's stuff right miracles. now? And you just don't it could be, know. yeah, it could be, or it could have been on eBay a long time ago. I have no idea. So it may that may be gone, long gone. <laughs> so that's a text later. To Perhaps is hey, do you exactly? Do you have my my bad? If only I'd put my me. name on it, like uh, Andy or something like that. You know what I mean? Like on the bottom foot or something like that, and I could just find imagine that. Imagine now, Mister Carr was I'm I'm assuming who he's called by everyone in the community. Uh, <laughs> just painting over your name. Yeah. With probably with a with a uh, silver crayon, no, right? or, with a silver, silver. Yeah. <laughs> or that thing went there through so go. many trades. Be like that episode of Mash, where they're just trading up. Like eventually, maybe that became like the USS yes. flag. <laughs> yeah, it, but it never came around. Like it should have come like around to me. To like somebody like, hey, I got yeah. this blue snaggletooth. <laughs> yeah, that's my blue your, snaggletooth. If you give me that piece of pizza. I'll give you this blue snaggletooth. <laughs> right it's got my name on it no by the time that got around that kid wanted a millennium falcon i'm sure at that point so <laughs> by that time it would have been star wars would have already been out of like, yeah you have, you have the new true. he-man figure i'll take it for a, a skeletor if you got that exactly exactly so was star wars your main yep. line did you did you go into other lines of that era um oh, like again we had the mego stuff uh star trek planet of the apes um a few ancillary ones that i don't remember off the top of my head but those were cool i mean those were really cool back then those were the those were the uh hot toys of their day uh, and those when, were when had, know, essentially what, like a, a 10 inch nine inch scale the migos eight in no yeah 10 inch mm, was it 10 inch nine or ten inch, right. yeah yeah you know what you know what they are like they're re they're re yeah. uh, issuing them now and they i mean you know in comparison and, and by today's standards they're nostalgic at best you know what i mean to pick one up um but i know people who are diehards and collect the Miko stuff so um, if, if you but they really were cool back in the day had the star trek cloth that that yeah holds, exactly holds on to dirt <laughs> exactly. like nothing else and it's it's incredible how many of those things came away like naked like what happened to those clothes? I just remember those snaps. I mean, I don't think my chief memory is yeah those, the snaps, metal snaps, yeah. and having to snap yep. that together the... before mm-hmm. Velcro. Yep, was yeah. was a thing that was that was little metal snaps and yep. elastic. And all the like the like Aquaman, like you had to peel that thing off from head to toe, man. Like it was one snap at the neck, and then you had to like take it. And we had an Aquaman, Aquaman with just no suit i don't know what happened to well, it yeah, no those, those weird like, why would boots? we take this off i don't know because <laughs> we could we did it because we could 
And uh, sometimes Batman would want to be Aquaman for a day. I don't know. They... <laughs> sometimes they're all going to the beach, I well, guess. Sometimes I don't know. Superman Big was in Starfleet. Things happened when you were That's kid. Right. You just decided yeah, every exactly. all those all those roles were so malleable. Uh it really you, was, man. That was a great those are good times. <laughs> but it shows that you also had a history with a larger scale figure that mm-hmm. that had uh cloth goods that was more poseable than a Wrist Star Wars figure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh do you, so you know your transition into six scale figures is not that off base when it comes to yeah embracing it's those... interesting like yeah I, I probably i mean that probably had something to do with it because i did like those figures back in the day um and i kind of just after uh return of the jedi um i wasn't really collecting as much from the kenner line um I don't know. I was, I was older then, you know, I was more into, I was kind of getting out of it um, at that point. And I might've bought, got some comic books. I still collected comic books and things like that, but toys were just kind of like, you know, going by the wayside. And that was the way it was for a long time. I carried my carted my comic books around in this Darth Vader case uh, with me uh, for, you know, 25 some odd years. (laughs) And, uh, before I got married. And then uh, I have a friend who had hot toys in his office. And these were really, really hot toys. Um, so this and I don't know. I'm just like, all right. Does that sound about right? I want to say yes. Uh, when did The Force Awakens come out? 2015. Okay. So it was probably like, yeah, it was probably like 2012, something like that. And it was just a year, few years before that. So I went out and bought... Uh, I'm I like, I love Monty Python and there wasn't much to choose from. You could get a Batman, you could get a Joker back then. Um, there was a, f- there was a few other superheroes. They were very rudimentary figures. A lot of them were sideshow figures. Um, I bought out, I bought the Monty Python and the Holy Grail, like set from somebody online and they're not great figures, but, um, I just thought it was so cool to have representations on the shelf of those right. things in my office. It just was really cool. And that I mean, it wasn't, it was totally deep. nerdy, but how deep did you go did oh you my get god just the knights or did you go and get the you know the full knights I of had the, uh, did you get tim the enchanter how, I, how deep did you go i had tim i had tim the enchanter i had the black knight i did not get the, the knight who says knee who is the only one that i don't think i had i had the mudslinger i had the uh dead collector the, uh, cart the bring out the death cart guy i forget what they actually call him but yeah had them all yeah. dead collector that's what it was yep um yeah, I had them all. Patsy, I had them all. Had your Patsy. I had Patsy. Yeah, I actually did do a, a photo with those a while back, probably a couple of years ago, because I had them out. I've since packed them away, and I don't know if I'm going to keep them or not. But uh, I'm like, I got to shoot these. So I had King Arthur and Patsy with the coconuts. The costuming is really uh, great. Going through the woods for that period, because they're yeah. not they're not easy costumes to pull off. They're very involved. Yeah, as mm-hmm. far as they far as the the good. actual construction of those things, you know, it has the tailoring yeah. issues that all that sideshow stuff did. The sculpts weren't bad. Yeah, like I would love to see professionally repainted versions of those head sculpts because I think I have were thought good about sculpts. this. I think they were too. Yeah, I think they were too. And I've thought about that. That's that's the only thing that's holding me back from selling them and and maybe getting new the cost of getting new out i've done a lot of custom work like i've i've gone down the custom road and it is pricey um and it has to be worth it you know what i mean it has to be something that you're really going to love and i'd want all of them done and it could be 350 dollars a figure to get a new outfit for those you know and and uh, probably another 150 to 200 dollars to have somebody repaint them so but this is a about show a five, about ranking six hundred dollar figure so you're gonna have to if you had to pick one character <laughs> oh to get, god to get your ultimate version repainted oh, face god. you sent it off get a nice custom paint job on it mm. what would you want well, Tim actually looks pretty good because he's covered up by the. It looks actually kind of looks like John Cleese. It's pretty good. So I'd probably go for two. I'd probably go for King Arthur and Patsy because it's like very representative of the, and the 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 Black Knight, is just has a helmet on, so you, you could put him up there too. So yeah, I'd go. I would then go with King Arthur scene. and Patsy. You'd have the Arthur Black yeah. Knight Patsy scene there. Exactly. You have your entire exactly. photo shoot done. 
Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so if any talented painters are out there who want to contact Dipper with a really good deal. I will trade you a, a blue snaggletooth for it if you want. <laughs> I don't, you, I don't have one. Do you want a beardy Han Solo? Do you want a scruffy Han? Do you want a scruffy Nerf Herder? <laughs> Come on, look at that work. Come on, look at that work. Look at that. Come on. That's you just Come realizing on. Leia's line about him. That's it's like, I got to make him scruffy. I had this thing where I was like, I was already creating like, so the comic books came out and uh, I really liked like Jax the Rabbit for some reason. And I started writing, drawing a whole comic book with Jax, Jackson. Um, it was probably the stupidest character ever, but like I, I had something about him I liked. Uh, so I gave him a ship. I, I did adventures and stuff like that. So we, I was we just kids creating this whole giant second. Green rabbit. How can we not love? <sighs> Come on, with guns and like, yeah. you, could, you know. And then DC cool gave us Captain suit. Carrot. They knew. DC knew. Yeah. Needed to carry yeah. on with that. And Bucky O'Hare. Come on, Bucky O'Hare is definitely Jackson inspired. Come on, yeah. it's, it's totally. Really, the 80s were the age of the, the rabbit. We got Roger Rabbit in that. Era two. <laughs> never thought about it that way, did you? But now you never. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. It might have been the year of the rabbit. I have no idea. Yeah, the seventies um, were the year of the cat. Yeah, <laughs> probably. Yeah. That's, That's a deep true. song reference for anyone out there who will want to appreciate the, their all these things. Oh, I remember that. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I'm. I'm old. <laughs> so. So I think we should get to your first choice. Now, okay. now, now, as as always, I asked you to not only choose five, but rank them. Mm -hmm. Did you yes. have trouble no, ranking tricky. your choices? Um, not as much as I thought I was going to, because the the number one is a clear number one. Uh, number two is pretty clear. Three, four, and five were a little tricky, and they're all still a little arbitrary, but uh, I think I've got them in the order that I, you know, I feel, I suppose. So, yeah. Well, let's go for your number five, then, and uh, all right. go ahead and reveal it. <sighs> number five is a very recent acquisition, and it came from a friend of mine, um, which makes it even better, and he gave me an incredible deal on it because he could have gone and put this up on eBay for uh, Boo Boo Bucks. Um, and it's the only um, Boba Fett hot toy figure that I did not have stupidly passed up on it, as I think many did. Uh, and that is the uh, animated look uh, Boba Fett. So this is the Christmas special animation coloration uh, with his big pronged gun. And this thing was severely underproduced. Was that a five? Uh, because I just or think 200? people. I don't know. I don't know the number, was, but, but I know it wasn't a lot. really, really low ones, right? On the yeah, um, it's it's pricey. Like you can find this closing in on nine hundred bucks at this point. You know what I mean? Eight or nine hundred bucks for this thing because people just passed it by and just like, yeah, I don't need that. That's ugly. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean, and uh, I don't think it's ugly, but you know, I mean, I think the the regular Boba Fett had just come out from Empire Strikes Back, and people were like, yeah, I don't, I don't need that um but yeah i i love this thing it's uh it's it's fantastic uh, so i have a, i have kind of a boba fett collection wanted? going on that you knew yeah and he knew that i wanted and i don't know that he i i don't know i must have mentioned it at some point and he must have been watching this is uh by the way shout out to bill this is a dork lair if you know dork lair um he uh had it and uh he kind of is getting out of hot toys and uh told it to me for a fantastic price so i uh, all thanks to him that i have that because i was not spending 800 dollars on this thing now someone no who, who, who who appreciates hot toys and has quite a few of them how would you rank that boba fett just as a boba fett knowing because that that figure probably now is what 10 years old nine years old how old was that that, oh, uh, that empire that's boba a fett good came question quite a while ago that's a good question. Is there a date on here? Hang on a second. Um, this is 2000, it says 18. And that might be right. It might be 2017 or 18. Which is five, uh, six, six years ago, which seems. Yeah, yeah. And things have think definitely improved. Which means yeah, that, that but, probably I mean, that Empire Boba Fett was probably in the 15, 16 range by the time a variant came out from it. Yep. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I don't think they've changed much to honestly, like it, it, it holds up to the new stuff. 
I mean, I think they're reusing a lot of the armor and a lot of the uh, cloth goods and stuff. Um, so, I mean, it's nice. <laughs> I mean, I, I just, I just love the coloration. That, that, uh, that holiday special, man. It's, it's very weird because at the time, my brother and I were extremely excited about this coming on TV, as you would be as a Star Wars kid who starved for anything star wars i mean you'd had a year with nothing <clears throat> um, nothing and you know our favorite characters were going to be there and this was going to be you know this huge thing b arthur and then who you're talking about b arthur and harvey corman exactly we i i had posters on on my wall of of b and uh yeah and huge and, and, mod and fan carney kid like we Art all carney I, both of them yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh exactly watch the carol burnett but, show uh, every week Carol Burnett was good. <laughs> I, I'm not, I'm but, not uh, saying either of those were bad. I'm just saying that <laughs> the posters were justified. It didn't belong in Star under- Wars. It, we found out it didn't belong in Star Wars. Yeah. Uh, it was Tim bizarre, Conway and we down. I think we were both, <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, he had a prior engagement. I think he had a dwarf <laughs> something or other that he had a film <laughs> or something. So. Dorf on vacation. Um, dorf, on, dorf on Hoth would have been good though that was people don't even know what we're talking about and it's probably for the best <laughs> yeah please don't look up any of this stuff really um yeah and then we started watching it and as anybody who has watched it now and never seen it before we were slack jawed we were just like i mean little kids but we were like what the hell is this <laughs> What are, what are we watching here? What what is happening? <laughs> what what is this? Like what what happened to Luke? What did, what is with that makeup? What, what happened to him? What it is was the it family was and why are all of them just speaking Wookie? Oh my God! It was such a huge letdown and disappointment. Except for that cartoon. That cartoon uh was the saving grace of that thing and i love that and i loved boba fett from the minute i saw him uh super cool and then uh you know got all the star logs after that and started reading up on you know what boba fett was going to be and seeing the prototype and all that stuff so and what it was only a few uh, months after that that the the mail away figure offers started appearing on the figure cards so, yeah. So suddenly yeah. that was a thing. This thing that was teased was now a figure you could add to that mail away. Yep. Still didn't know who the hell he was. Didn't not really. We did. We didn't need to. <laughs> didn't that care. Era, all we knew I mean, was look, it was a new figure, and he looked. Look cool. at that helmet. Come on. Cool as hell. I mean that that is why that is sitting on my desk right now. The recent mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. BBC repaint of those. Yeah. That's great colors. too. Yeah. I, I'm loving all those, man. I've got all the different uh, comic book colors and stuff like that. I'm actually on the hunt for the, which I don't know how I missed, but the, the white prototype uh, carded figure that was the mail away as well, um, which I'm probably going to pay through the nose for, but I really want. And Hot so. Toys did the prototype but Boba Fett in the six scale as well. Didn't Sideshow it? did. I have it up Sideshow. there. Yeah. Uh, the white one. Yep. Um, yeah, and that looks nice too. That that's you know that's a little more basic because that was sideshow, but uh, pretty good, not bad. Poor sideshow, just they were on the forefront. They did so many things, and then just to be to be blown out of the water when it comes to six scale. Although I will say I, their their it's... Darth Maul was a great. This probably one of their best figures. Agreed. I didn't buy the Hot Toys because I'm really happy with that Darth Maul. I went out and bought the like original Sideshow one, the really bad one, that had the robe and put that on the new uh, Maul. The and late it 2000s looks really one good. that came out, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It looks really good. Still have it on my shelf. Really like them a lot. Uh, the Hot Toys one is very good, obviously. It's, it's really, really nice. You get the rolling eyeballs and all that stuff, but it stands up. Their bodies are terrible. They're... I don't know what they're doing there, but they're they're awful. They're a, they're a hot mess. But um, yeah, I don't think they, like sideshow back. Yeah, go ahead. If they haven't changed that, like I I you know I I used to get it's sideshow unreal. stuff all the time because I used to review stuff for them when I was at the various things that I did. So I and I didn't realize up in the attic I had still had a Commander Fox that they had sent years and years ago. Oh wow! Uh, nice. And and I had also the uh, the modal nodes. Uh, two pack 
that they had released. And I and I pulled them out. And I think, oh, this is great because obviously the one thing we're not getting from Hot Toys are aliens. Still aren't getting yeah. aliens from them. Uh, and we hadn't gotten, but now we have you know the Fox announcement to pull them out, and it's nice to have them. But once you get them in a position and manage to make sure those ankles don't give out, you just don't want to breathe on them <laughs> because they are just ready at a moment's notice, the slightest disturbance mm-hmm. in the room. Those things will top. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, I got to say the, uh, the modal nodes, I, I bought all those year, a few years ago um, at a pretty decent price. And those are, those are pretty decent figures. Those bodies are still kind of bad, but they're a little tighter and uh, they look, they just look really good on the shelf, man. I like those things. Just a lot, to have so. them. I don't know what the aversion mm-hmm. to alien characters is that hot toys has. I don't either. And for a while I'd heard a rumor um, that Sideshow had somehow locked up the rights to creatures and uh, droids, like the main droids anyway, um, which would have made sense because it's been a, I mean, Hot Toys just started making 3PO's uh, in the last few years. Right. Uh, before that, they never had one. Um, and Hot Toys had had, or uh, Sideshow had had one out for six or seven years. And Sideshow obviously um, also did the, what I also have, the uh, the probe droid that you have. Oh, yeah, here. probe droid and the, the Tauntaun over there. The Tauntaun was great, too. They did a great job with that. Um, yeah, I don't know why they're not making more creatures. Um, they did a great job. Um, it's funny, the, the Four Horsemen, who I work for now with the Mythic Legions, did a lot of, they did the Bosk sculpt for them. I, I think they Bosque. did the Hammerhead, that is uh, great. which is a great-looking figure. Yeah, Bosk looks good. Uh, Hammerhead. Um, looks really good. Um, but again, you get them in that pose and you just don't breathe them. <laughs> yeah, they don't do much. I mean, yeah, yeah, it much. Greedo, on the show. Greedo needs much. Greedo needs much. Greedo needs much. And honestly, the aliens are the the best sideshow paint jobs. Like humans, they yes. they still haven't really not been able to come close to getting to a no. Hot Toys quality. Which is odd no, no. in a world no. that Hot Toys exist and third parties are able to do it. That consistently science show just yeah. can't seem to to navigate that. Yeah, it's very odd. I, I really don't know. I uh, yeah, I can't figure it out. I can't figure out why they can't just go out and buy. I've bought better bodies for for twenty bucks than they have on their their figures that they sell you. You know what I mean? And I'm I'm buying it one at a time. You know, I, in bulk, I would think you could get a pretty. Unless they just bought a warehouse full of figure bodies. <laughs> they're in the just, they're trying to get rid of those, and they're just trying to work through the supply. <laughs> And until that they do, be. they can't have it. That any could more. be. That it was a bulk be. purchase. They made a mistake. They didn't know things would <laughs> get made better. A terrible mistake. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but then you have the custom market. You know, could talking be. about aliens. You know, I wanted to bring up because uh, uh, I decided to, to print it. You know, folks like Landspeeder Luke out there commissioning. Oh yeah. You know, for Black Series. Scale. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, nice. So I thought, well, you know, what if I went ahead and printed that in a six scale? Wow, look so... at that. That looks pretty good. <laughs> and this is a filament print. This is not a resin print. Wow, that's nice. What, uh, I don't want to get too nerdy and geeky here, but what printer is that? That's a uh, The good... Elegoo. Uh, I think it's oh, the really? Saturn. So, wow. So not resin, though. Heads. No, wow. not resin at all. And you can see the detail. I mean, it took about five days that's to really print. good. But set it and forget it. <laughs> Yeah, no lines though. That's really nicely. I might have to get that because I have a resin printer and I like it a lot. But um, oh yeah, the, this, I would just I mean, like this the and convenience be, and the lightness. Yeah. Oh, this thing. Yeah, is... exactly. Yeah, super heavy and super breakable, which uh, is the other problem. So yeah, but no, it took yeah. less than a roll of filament awesome. to do it. Uh, definitely. And his arms are articulated a little bit, right? Uh, little they bit? do. There you go. <laughs> and those were those were separate. So you had the body print. Uh, these yeah. two front arms were not part of the body. No, no. Oh, that's right. All four arms that's were separate. Great. They all come off. So they're that's all... fantastic. That looked great on the shelf, man. Pink and he has up, two you know I mean? two heads selection. So you have a more smiling one, and nice. then, but even his nose ring printed fine. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, go ahead over to really Peter cool. Luke's Patreon. He has these, and he just did one that I'm, I'm going to start printing. 
Uh, I just did the test in the Black Series scale. Speaking of aliens. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. So there'll be do the, a, but, but I'll but I'll I'll look like a super big boss. <laughs> just, you nasty. can't help but do that sound though. I'm shocked that's that cool. we didn't get like a Jar Jar announcement from you know with the Jar Jar Renaissance that's happened from Hot yeah Toys to do that. um that's gotta happen right I mean I mean, I mean look we just literally two days ago got finally at long long last another Han Solo figure from Hot Toys um. Which I think looks pretty pretty damn good. Um, I, pretty happy with it. So I guess worth the wait. I how guess. would you rank? Because you you obviously probably own most of them, and I own a few of them. Mm -hmm. Going back to obviously the ones that Sideshow did, Medicom did, Indiana Joneses, and you know the Hot Toys Han Solos. How would you rank right. the Harrison Ford likenesses that we've gotten over the years? Ooh, all of them. Okay, so this is <laughs> this is funny because I was just thinking about this the other day um strangely enough i i honestly think this new one the return of the jedi one is possibly in my opinion the best sculpt they've done now it's still the hair needs work the hair looks a little too producty it, it he was it was very fluffy and it was it was kind of messy in the in the movie it changed from scene to scene um because i'm sure he was a a pain in the butt to uh, deal with. So <laughs> fixing it, his it, hair. It looks like they picked a PR shot for the hair they went with. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. There is a PR shot that they did a, a, a photo that, which I'm sure you saw that, that he's like kind of sideways like this and holding the gun, I think, but it's the same shot. So they use that. And I'm sure that's what people were looking at, but um, they've got to broaden their horizons and look at some other, um, some shots but i think other than that i think it's a very good sculpt um people have thrown out the stormtrooper han solo as being the best i don't agree i would put old man han from the force awakens in second place i would probably put the stormtrooper in third place and that the one from uh, a new hope is is definitely dead last that just didn't i didn't think that looked anything like harrison ford i've seen it repainted um i think and it, it looks would, okay yeah the skin tone is very odd on it which i think is what makes the, yeah. the way the light hits it it's a flat paint really. it's not a great paint job on that thing and 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 luke was wasn't very good either at the time i'm really hoping we're on the verge of uh, a reissue of those figures, even though I have them and I could probably sell them for a lot of money right now. I'm happy to, you know, you know, trade them for a snow speeder or something and, and get the new ones, get their that good. And obviously we have the, the hot toys, the original Raiders release, which had the weird sunken eye socket issue. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But I, th for me, the, the best Harrison Ford we've gotten is and i'm shocked to even say this a sideshow figure and it's the temple of really doom. the temple of doom indie oh you know what yeah i wasn't thinking i was thinking han solo uh but yeah if you're talking about harrison ford yeah actually the new indie is is pretty good the old old man indie again like the older faces are more forgiving i think you can hide a little bit more but yeah you're right that one was was, was a decent and probably the best figure. outside of the darth maul one of the best sideshow paint jobs in six scale that we've ever got i've uh talking about custom I, i've gone down the uh indiana jones custom route um which is like just one of those custom grail things that that everybody searches for and so there's just tons of custom parts on here some of the hot toy stuff all custom clothing and things like that custom the head sculpt. looks great uh, but i'd be very happy if uh they came out with a fantastic looking young indiana jones quite frankly that would be incredible you I would know what? Love that. hot toys please i would love this just <laughs> just sell replacement heads just just open up Dude. a whole brand new market where people don't have to buy the whole figure over again just do a run of heads that is the newer sculpts and make them available this is the same thing when i talk like hasbro make replacement lightsabers for figures available mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just, just if you have a new sculpt, I mean, you're older. I know they want people to buy, but in this yeah. economy, if you you would legitimately make because people always want, you know, a more articulated body or better costuming on it, you know, because certainly they get better sure. with that process of fitting the clothes right. properly and materials they choose. 
but you're cutting out mm -hmm. a huge market with as expensive of things have gotten. Because I know you were talking about, I saw your video with that announcement on how expensive that Han is most likely going to be. The price range with the way Hot Toys figures have increased. 290. The fact that, that, you know, I can remember a time when I go, 200 for a Hot Toys figure? That's yeah, expensive. I know. <laughs> and now that seems like a dream yeah. price if we were to get one. Oh, God. Like that. Well, every time, as long as I've been doing the, the show, the one six pack, and we've been doing that for a few years now, every time I say a price now, I'm like, wait a minute. Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> My co hosts are like, <laughs> No, that's pretty much what they're, you know, that's 280, 280, 280 for a standard figure, not even a deluxe figure or a die cast Iron Man or anything like that. Uh, and it was, they were in the 230s when we started doing this. That was like an average, average figure, 235 or so, which still a lot of money. And, and I guess over the course of six or seven years to go up 60 bucks isn't terrible. But when you just look at that price and you go, wow, this is $300, over $300 with shipping for one figure now, you know what I mean? For now, if, you know, a Hot Toys figure, not a custom correctly. figure, a Hot Toys figure. That like the deluxe Luke Bespin that came mm -hmm. out years ago, wasn't that in like the 250 range for the two different figure bodies? And I think so. I bought that one secondhand, um, but I want to say it, it probably was. If you look that, that up, it was had, probably- You had two Lukes, you had the Vader head, you had the, the weather vane, <laughs> You had you had all of that stuff in that box. It was ridiculous the amount of two stuff full, that was in that box. Two full figures. Yeah, not two one where figures. you had to like I, choose which body to use. You know, I actually we did an episode on all the, the DX figures, and if I can go through here quickly while we're talking and find the my notes from that, I actually have all the pricing for that. And I don't remember, but I think, I think it was like be, sub three hundred dollars. I think, I think it was sub three hundred dollars for that. I think we're gonna we're gonna oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, here we go. Wait a minute. I found the list. Is it on here? Where is it? Um, uh, Bespin Luke, three hundred dollars for two full bodies. Two full bodies. The Darth Vader helmet, massive display head piece, massive display stands for both of them, plus the weather vane with lights on the weather vane. <laughs> it's crazy. Three hundred bucks. I'm, I'm looking over at that That's weather right. vane and that Luke hanging from it right now. Oh, see, I want to do that. I can't. I can't quite fit it in here. I've got to find a place. It's 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 incredible. Well, it's so the good. ceiling. It has to just be hanging from the ceiling. I gotta. I gotta get a ceiling down here. <laughs> see what you need to do. That's my is next step. Hang it here. above your shelf, and on the mm -hmm. shelf right beneath it, have your Lando reaching up for him. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Leia trying to go. Yeah. Yeah. That was Lando. Yeah. Right. right. <laughs> That would be great. I would love if they that redid a New Hope Chewbacca. Speaking of that Han Solo two back, a two pack, because I think that is the worst Chewbacca in that face and how they realize that face on that New Hope. Unless someone is next found to them. Force Awakens, that Force Awakens one is pretty bad. Now I did a mod on that. Like you had to break the jaw, not break it, but you had to take it apart. I would and love cut to see your down. New Hope because my I'm very disappointed in the my New Hope. Chewbacca. And maybe it's a grooming lighting, issue. Lightning. I did do a little bit of lightning on the uh, on the face a little bit, but I've seen some people really go nuts with the lightning and repainting the eyes. Yeah, because um, it all just sort of sinks it's... into, it looks more like a mask than it does Chewbacca. Yeah, he doesn't have those nice bright eyes that Peter Mayhew had shining through there, so it's a little too dark in there. Uh, it Don't get me wrong, it's not great, but at, for the time, I thought it was a pretty good figure. Oh, yeah. No, it, what is, it wasn't until seeing... I think what I, I like about the Force Awakens one is it does do the lightning. That you do have the contrast in the hair that yeah. it doesn't just sort of devolve into yeah, a, yeah. a mask face. I got a good feeling that in the next few oh. weeks, as of the recording of this show, we're going to see a Return Chewbacca. The Jedi? Because I, don't, I think that may be the reason that they even held up Han for so long, you know, um, that, they, uh, the Return of the Jedi. they wanted to do a Chewy. Yeah. Maybe a DX, maybe, maybe the option to get a Chewbacca or a DX or a deluxe version or whatever, uh, with a broken up C3PO, uh, on his back, which would be amazing. That would be they incredible. That windswept hand. They have to do that. The, they have to do it. Yeah. yeah. The parted in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> 
He went to the same stylist as Han. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so your number five is the animated yep. Boba Fett from Hot Toys. Indeed. Which you're lucky yep. to have. But it didn't make your number yeah, four. Yeah, uh, very lucky. So you, you chose that that would be no. your number five. So someone something ranked above that. So what is your number four? So as I said, I've delved into the world of customs. And Han Solo is probably... I, mean, I love Darth Vader. I have a little bit of a Darth Vader collection, which we'll get into later too. But I mean, if I had to pick one character from Star Wars that I loved, it's Han Solo. Um, he spoke to me as a kid so much so that I drew a, a beard on him. Um, Please so one this one I did not draw, draw a beard, beard on. on Please. This is not, <laughs> I did not draw a beard on this hot toy. <laughs> Although that original Hell's Head sculpt I might have, but this is the original A New Hope Han Solo with a custom sculpt from uh, Janix Shin. Um, and this was done, I don't know, I don't know how many years ago, five, five years ago or so. Um, again, this camera is probably not going to pick it up, but it's, it's a fantastic sculpt. I'm looking at my um, Han right now that's sitting up on the shelf. Yeah. He just did, he did an incredible job with this thing. Um, the hair, I, I think it's, I think it's the best sculpt, you know, of Harrison Ford that I've, I've seen, although I've seen some very good indie ones though. That's true. Um, but I love this as Han. Um, so I'm just really super happy. I've invested in like leather boots for him. Um, I didn't go out and go nuts and get the leather. Um, there is somebody who makes a nice leather um, belt and holster. Uh, I may I may pick that up at some point. So you're saying um, you it have can get thoughts, a little crazy. You have thoughts on Hot Toys' continued use of pleather? Then I'm assuming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think the materials that they're using now have gotten a little bit better. And I, listen, I'm, I guess I'm lucky in that the temperature down here, it's a little, it's a little chilly. Um, it's comfortable, but a little chilly and there's no light and there's no humidity. I have a, a air purifier over here that I keep on, but not everybody has that luxury. Some people are living in, you know, in Florida and in Indonesia and, that stuff just doesn't last, man. Like it's just, it, it gets torn apart, unfortunately. Um, and there's not much you can do about it um, based on where you, where you are uh, in your environment. So uh, yeah, it'd be great. Uh, I think, I think with the D, the, uh, the new Indiana Jones uh, from the dial of destiny, they're doing leather boots and a leather jacket. Uh, the only thing that's not leather is that bag. And uh, yeah, I'd like to see more of that. I'd like to see more leather. Uh, or at least just something a little bit better than with pleather. But, it doesn't um, seem like a lot yeah, of I'll invest in it for going with pleather. So I don't yeah. know what they're yeah. I would love to know how the I don't know. break down. Maybe again they next to the sideshow warehouse of bodies. There's the hot toys <laughs> warehouse of pleather. pleather that they bought so much <laughs> pleather they got to go through. Hot toys warehouse of pleather sounds like something on cinemax uh just like there's something starring david duchovny that's right exactly. <laughs> um yeah it's possible it's possible um i completely derailed your thought now you're just thinking of <laughs> yeah yeah i can't i can't i'm picturing the, the credits for that move that show it's a lot terrible. of soft focus a lot of weird yeah <laughs> yeah that's exciting a lot of neon. neon yep yeah. a lot of neon yeah, neon <laughs> A lot of wet streets, <sighs> a lot of reflections. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, and perfect. a lot of and a that's lot perfect. of saxophone. Just all saxophone. All saxophone, baby. Got to be saxophone. <laughs> I miss the saxophone. <laughs> but but yeah, I just love. I mean, I will I will take the time to and invest in a figure uh, at this point that I really really like. Um, I, they, they could come out with another one of these tomorrow, and it could be a great sculpt, and I would still keep this up here. Would, would that um, Han be number four is. on your list without the custom head, if it still had the stock head? No, 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 no way. I love it, but no, it was, was, I was very disappointed in the head when I got it. I was like, ah, this, but at the time it's like, it was, that was literally the first Star Wars hot toy I got that set, that Chewie and Han set. And, um, I, it was like, hey, I just want something on my desk. You know, I just, that's all I'm going to get. I'm not getting anything like else. a big win. But those existed. And yeah. And that, and that Hot Toys Han was leagues better than the, oh. what I, what I, the first time I saw it, I mistakenly read it as the 12 inch smuggler. 
Han Solo from Sideshow. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, oh, those sideshow things. Yeah, I mean the sideshow oof, sculpt yeah. and mean, paint job on that, and then on the Han and Luke. Great for the time when they're sure. No, yeah. I mean, I remember the first hot toy. Do you remember the first hot toy you ever saw that you went, my God, they're able to do that with paints? I remember seeing yeah viral aid that I, this may even have been early early days of Twitter, pre Twitter, just message boards, uh, seeing just rows and rows of their godfather sculpt the godfather the don Cor- the godfather the first thing i had ever heard of hot toys as a company was seeing mm-hmm. and going well that looks real this yeah. is not this is not what i know of from this scale from what we've seen available this this is possible to do on a production scale mm-hmm. that godfather some would argue damn toys came out with two very good godfather figures a couple of years ago or last two years ago I love them, um, and I was. It was another thing that I just wasn't willing to go out and spend all that money on such an older figure. But that Godfather sculpt, some people still say that's better than uh, the Damn Toys one, which I think is very good. Um, that was perfect. I mean, it was that was incredible for its time. It still is incredible. Uh, I would, you know, I would definitely buy that if if I was a Godfather fan for sure. And I am, but like I have one so. But that certainly but, seems, yeah, that, that for me was what put Hot Toys on the map as a a company to see what they were doing. Because at the time, I, think so, I, know, yeah. I just thought it's like a one-off. They're just doing this Godfather license, and that's the last we'll see yeah. them. Yeah, I, don't, I think that was before the Joker um, from Dark Knight. Um, must have been. Dark Knight Joker was kind of one of the, one of the first ones that, brought me back into it and then i kind of looked at some of the other stuff and saw the godfather and yeah it, it they were doing incredible stuff back then i mean the thing that's the thing that's sad is like all the sideshow stuff that we're talking about like that was you know is now gone by the wayside and you can't can't barely even get rid of even for like the, the clothing for a custom because the clothing isn't that very isn't that good um a lot of these things today uh looking at companies like in art uh and even what hot toys is doing with with sculpts these days those are going to look dated stuff. We bought three, four years ago is going to start to look dated and like, wow, we, we settled for this. Uh, right. So it's, it'll be well, particularly when with third parties coming onto the scene and yeah, the, the yep. unlicensed market that has exploded in the past couple of years, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. particularly with characters you'd never thought you'd see because licenses the are Watchmen. very hard to get. Yeah. Just 66 Batman or right? getting so, the jump. I mean, I have the hot toys one, but, Oh my god, that Joker is incredible! Like the Hot Toys' production process, I would also love to know. I would love to know just sort of the. <laughs> we're gonna announce it this year. See you in five years, and you'll think, you'll eventually see this thing. And I think their 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 choosing is like this. All right, we're gonna do Han Solo now. <laughs> like, <laughs> there doesn't seem to be much of a strategy. And, oh. Yeah, it's it's very crazy. It's all over and the place. And yet sometimes I they'll mean, crank even... through a thing. Like, I remember the when the Guardians of the Galaxy figures were oh, yeah. coming out. And you mm-hmm. had boom, 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 boom. And then Drax was yep. like two years later to yeah. finish yeah, out yeah. that set. <laughs> Af- after the sequel yeah. had come out, you finally got <laughs> Drax to finish out the first right. movie's Guardians of the Galaxy. And then to see what the Bad Batch, how quickly they've been burning through those, is shockingly short. Like to have mm-hmm, three of mm-hmm. those characters hit within a couple of months yeah. was not the hot toys that I know. <laughs> no, those are incredible figures too. I'm really, really. But also to know um, we'll never get a complete Bad Batch because I have they ever done? They've never done like a child character. We've never got a young Anakin. This is a weird thing, and I don't know what the deal is. I'm not really sure. Um, and I've. Eh, I don't want to go down that road, but I've seen people talking about like Inart is doing a Harry Potter and it's the, it's young Harry Potter and they're going to do Hermione. And, and it, some people kind of say like, oh, it's the Harry Potter trio. They're the same ones that had the Lord of the Rings license and the Game Asmus did 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 some. They weren't very good. The, Asmus has done a decent job with Lord of the Rings, but uh, the Harry it wasn't, Potter it was pre it was pre Asmus. What was the what was the who had the Game of Thrones license before that did like the really nice oh three zero three zero did the yeah, uh, the did they? Potter they did. I don't remember them doing a Harry the Potter. Trio. Okay. Oh no, no, no! It was Star Race. 
Star Race. It was Star Race. And Star Race Star did Race. the uh, Tyrion Lannister. The original no, Tyrion no, Lannister. three zero did do three zero did do Game of Thrones. Um, okay, so but Star Race super, had the. But Star uh, Race had yes, they yeah. had the, a very small yeah, line. They were not good. They, they did the Voldemort good. as well, right? Yeah, Voldemort was decent, um, but yeah, they were very hit and miss with the sculpts. Um, but you know, in artists coming out with one rooted hair, it looks incredible. Um, but I keep seeing people say like, oh, I think it's kind of weird and and creepy to have this like these young kids on my shelf, and I'm like, it's you watch the movie, like you enjoyed the movie. It's a it's a what toy. Are, what, if you're having are these thoughts, there are it's deeper so issues weird. that you need to deal. This with. is this is my issue. Like, what? Where is that coming from, man? Like, it's weird. I have no problem with that, and I would love an Omega. Like, I, I think Omega would be fantastic, and she, you know, she, I would love to see what they do and make her kind of realistic, um, like kind of the way they did Ahsoka from the Clone Wars. I think yeah, they did a great job with that. heads for the helmet, and yeah. But that's yeah. the thing with hunt toys is you never know when they're going to complete. A set of something yeah that's the thing um the i think it's finishes. you never you can yeah. never you can never depend on them to finish true out a team once they start it. it's not quite as bad as more say marvel legends but the those marvel legends go deep yeah. so or, i can or, understand or the that. fact that <laughs> the the marvel uh, the uh, uh star wars vintage collection has only had hunter from the bad batch and no signs they're getting yeah what's up with that what a what a there. weird way to just mess with people I'll go here's one of them enjoy at least i don't think he has that much to do with the it entirety of it yes yeah i don't seasons. think he has that much to do with it yeah yeah both yeah yeah right exactly <laughs> uh i'm hoping mr stevie i don't think he has that kind of uh control right now but i hope maybe just his presence will help whip them into shape a little bit i don't i don't know we'll none see. of us they need exactly a kid they both need a kick in the pants now yeah, I know. Um, and he's yeah, too. Those teams he's need to kick in the past. Though vintage, to let us. Yeah, I know. <laughs> vintage collection is doing a great job. I was a black series collector, and I have pretty much abandoned black series at this point. I still still have them, still keep them, but I love the vintage collection. Man, I got that. I got the, uh, um, the Mandalorian, um, uh, Razorcrest, and I was like, yeah, vehicles, yeah. Do you back the ghost? You have yeah. the ghost coming. Three and three quarters. Oh, yeah, I got the ghost. I don't know where that's going, but I got it coming. Yeah. You're going to hang it, right? Yeah. You're going to gonna find a stud in the ceiling and. I'm going to hang myself, probably, because I feel like it's just too much stuff here, man. There's too much stuff. Well, where's your, where's your um, razor crest at this point? My razor crest is on the floor in front of me over here. So, <laughs> sadly. So, you've gotten to the floor stage yeah. of. Yeah, that's just going to be, that's where it exists. But you don't have the sail barge, so you don't have to deal with that, right? Did you get the sail no, barge? No, thankfully, I think thankfully, I feel thankfully that I didn't get that because, yeah. Uh, a friend of mine got that. I got to I got to play with it and stuff. It was pretty cool. But, yeah, I, I have no room for that whatsoever. Yeah, the the ghost, I have the big Millennium Falcon, and that just yeah, rotates I wish I had that. from awkward space to awkward space because it just <laughs> is impossible. Yeah. And you, you know, I, I'm wary about, you know, some people have it up on a shelf sideways and, you know, brackets holding it up. I don't want to see that thing take a tumble. It's like, it's too nice for it to have a shelf fail. Like it just right. slipped. Or, you you know. Right. You, you and I've heard about it. your shelf fails. So, like, we don't want to see that happen again. <laughs> oh, well, well, now when you heard about how many hot toys were on that shelf that took a tumble God. i mean there were easily the, the, 25 uh, hot toys on that God. that were part of that tumble i've had some, i've had some failures and details but not a single yeah, one insane. of them broke that's great in that that's incredible and one of Thank those God things those... was a sideshow uh uh fertility idol replica that fell along i remember, with, I remember you said that yeah with the indie in front of it and that indie is <laughs> thankfully still fine Wow, amazing. So, amazing. Yeah, always, you don't need that. To always happen, check yeah. to make sure things are <laughs> firmly seated in in whatever any uh, stud. In any stud that you're hanging it. Yeah. <laughs> make sure right. it's double check. Yeah. I, I actually have a line yeah, I on, have the, that... on the bracket now. I have a marker mark. And periodically I'll just look and go, is it moved? 
I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I, I, <laughs> Do you I just get like, the stud finder out every once in a while I and just go like 15, dee, dee, dee. Okay. 15 okay. like four inch screws. There's so much I did to be secure <laughs> when that thing went up, but I don't trust it. I just, I will never trust a shelf again. <laughs> I, I can't blame you. I can't yeah. blame you. Or that one time um, when suddenly, like, yeah. you know, a plane flies overhead or there's a sonic boom. You know, you got to worry about that. Because <laughs> we all, right. all of our shelves are dominoes. Really. Yeah, I could not live in uh, California. I mean, people then ask me why I use stands because there's a lot of one six collectors are like, oh, stands. I don't use stands. And I'm like, well, right now I'll, I'll have these plexiglass at some point, but right now they're open. And even if they weren't, um, I don't trust it, man. We've, I mean, it's not unheard of to have an earthquake in New York. It's uh, extremely rare, but it could happen. And, yeah. and certainly uh, I just the don't buildings are wake not up prepared that day. for it. So you would have a, no. a, a pretty good jolt if anything happened. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah. What would be the thing in your collection that you would be most depressed about if something happened to it? Oh, that's that fire question. What do you grab? Um, uh, that Han Solo would be one. <laughs> that Han Solo and probably these Indiana Jones customs, just because of the amount of time and effort and work I put into them. Um, and you can't touch that that hand sculpt for or that head sculpt for. It, it's a lot of money. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of money. That's why I haven't. I don't want to have to pay that again. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it looks it looks great. So yeah. You got what you want. So I would grab it. those probably. Yeah. I mean, there's other stuff that I would tr truly miss, obviously. But uh, and worst case scenario, you just two, pop those heads off and grab those. <laughs> That's what I would probably do. Just start <laughs> running around grabbing all the custom heads that I got, taking those. Screw the bodies. We'll get new bodies. So uh, we're up to your number three. This is middle of the pack. Number three. Okay, so this is going off the uh, off the beaten path of action figures, but still collectible. Um, I know you've talked about the, this. I, I am a huge Ralph McQuarrie fan uh, ever since I was a kid. Like that. Like Star Wars was amazing, and then when I started getting, I got the portfolio for Empire: The Empire Strikes Back of all the McQuarrie. Uh, um, uh, paintings, and then I got the Return of the Jedi one, and I was enamored with that stuff. I just, I loved it. I loved it as much as I love the movie. So, this is the big one. There is a couple of Ralph McQuarrie books out, but this is the Art of Ralph McQuarrie. It's about a, it's like a, I think I paid like six hundred dollars for this thing. Um, sadly, we were having some. Um, landscaping done outside and somebody left the hose on which is like right just outside this wall and i didn't have it up on the shelf that day i had it down because i was looking at it and uh got a little bit of water damage on it but it's it's okay it's for the most part it's still fine but this i could still enjoy it because it's just a beautiful book it's got everything he's done everything he did before star wars for books for um nasa and and then up into the star so wars and past comprehensive it, gorgeous review of everything gorgeous <laughs> Yeah, um, I love it. I mean, Ralph McQuarrie, you know, we've gotten a couple in Black Series, and I know we had those older figures uh, that I still haven't picked up, and I, I keep meaning to. Um, I would buy every every design for every character that he bought in Hot Toys form, in Black Series form, and vintage collection form. I, I love those designs. They're incredible. So you have all of the ones they've done so far? I want all the ones they've done so far. I haven't gone out and actually bought everything. Uh, and I don't know if it's something that I want to keep in package and buy in package or just say, yeah, hey, I'll buy them loose and put them up on the shelf. I'm not really sure. Now the general diet um, but I love them. The jumbo figs as well of the concept. Yeah, I got that. I got the Vader. I don't have the, I saw Han you have the, the uh, star killer, right? Um, yes. The, this. Yeah. And then Han just came the, out. Pre-Luke, yeah, uh, girl. Uh, Han came out too, really. I yeah. didn't see that one. Ooh. So they're, they're, so, the, they're... so the Han Obi Wan, the, uh, the the beardy Han combination. Exactly yeah, what yeah. you want. The you want it's it's yeah. a bearded Han for you. Yeah, I'm hoping they do the stormtrooper one. That would be incredible. The lightsabered stormtrooper. That would be amazing. The um, what the yeah. What I have a little bit of a Macquarie 
Do you have all the from ones from the thirtieth anniversary collection as well? Like they they did the the Rebel Fleet Trooper and no, no. The Those are all Trooper. stuff I have to go back and get. Yeah, no. They're, they're really the 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 Yoda. I know the. Uh, I know. The I know. Yeah. Yeah. They That's were the sitting in a I'm store uh, down the street from me. What's that? Is the Obi Wan and Yoda two pack mm -hmm. that I think was a San Diego Comic Con exclusive? Oh yeah, I've seen that. But one I've too, slowly yeah. gone back. Last year was my big eBay year of trying to hunt down and finish off all of those prototypes because they're nice. so nice. Yeah, to have. I want to get them all. It is a. It is a. It's something I got to work on a little uh, slowly, you know, because I don't. I don't want to just, you know, go out and spend top dollar on everything. And hopefully, get no, a, no. I was very here and there. I was very judicious about. Thankfully, right, right. And they were produced in enough <laughs> the, numbers, except for those con exclusives, sometimes that they're not ridiculous to get them. You can yeah. get them in like yeah. the, the twenty five to thirty dollar range. Sometimes yeah. a lot cheaper for some of those. I did pick up. Um, the three PO and the R two for for this image. Um, oh, nice! I think that was the celebration exclusive. Was the two of them? I think so. Yeah, they came with the coins. Um, yeah, and then a friend of mine made the custom Chewy based on a three seven five, and just made a custom head, the more dog looking head for it. And then I put the uh, put together the custom Luke for some from some Black Series figures. Um, yeah, so I didn't even I do realize those. that that was. I, I thought that too. was that was a uh, painting. So that's the that's a photo shoot. That's impressive. All, uh, Hold it up again. Now that all, now that I can appreciate it fully. All in camera, uh, photo shoot. Yeah. Now was that the Va the Black Series Vader that just came out recently, or was that the 30th anniversary Vader? You'll find out. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> You'll find out. <laughs> So the book is it's your number coming. three. The 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 art of the book is my number, is three. number three, which is clearly yeah, setting absolutely. up for what we're building towards. Now we know. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So well, what's your number two then? So number two is a little more sentimental, sentimental, and um, this is going and again diving into my Darth Vader case. This is as we spoke about earlier, um, my original mail away. Uh, Boba Fett. Uh, so this is the original one that I got in the in the mail away. Sadly, nice threw out the box and the little instruction. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's got a few little scratches on the chest there, but not too bad. I mean, it's uh, I was careful. It so. should be there. <laughs> um, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> going back to the cantina, um, and I just I just read this the other day on another channel that we were talking about um, mail aways on. Um, I wrote a letter uh, to Kenner, <laughs> General Mills Kenner, because you know you had a you had a cutout for proofs of purchase, and at the time, like I had a bunch of Star Wars figures, but we threw the boxes out. You know what I mean? We weren't keeping the boxes gen generally, or maybe I didn't want to cut them out. I I think I just threw the boxes out. So I wanted this very badly, and I didn't know when I was going to get four new figures to send away. And God forbid I miss this cool toy with this rocket firing backpack. Um, so I wrote them a letter, um, gentlemen, I have enclosed the proof of purchase for your star Wars cantina adventure set, uh, in which, which comes with four goon figures, which is what they called them in the series catalog. Uh, the figures didn't come in packages or with proof of purchases. Therefore, I thought if I put the seal from the can adventure set, you would know that I also bought the four goons. And is it possible for me to get the Boba Fett? <laughs> Please answer sincerely yours. And my dad photocopied this because he thought it was just great. He just loved the the fact that I wrote this and used gentlemen and therefore and things like that at my age. <clears throat> so uh, they sent it to me uh, for the proof of purchase. I don't think just they imagine carried, Larry so. in the mailroom <laughs> opening up this right, letter exactly, and exactly, take, and like... taking it upstairs and going, guys, you got to see this thing. <laughs> Oh, that's what bigger. i would like to think happened just like somebody was bigger. like yeah i mean kenner was exactly so oh. at that time everyone i'm sure oh, yeah. that that letter got passed around as ah uh, maybe maybe just send maybe him, just, send him, or, just send him the figure he needs that figure 
what do we see i was thinking a little more cynical than you and they're like they just got the envelope and it said boba fett offer and they go okay send this kid one (laughs) yeah send this kid one they're not checking these proof of purchases they don't care if there's proof of purchases in there i mean maybe they did the fact that it was so so small scale ish still we know that a human was opening those things up and processing all those things yeah most likely most likely I would love to know how many of them were were sent out. That would be interesting. Somebody must have that stat or it's close to it anyway. But yeah, still love this thing, man. I know I watched um, um, your uh, Toy Galaxy with Dan Larson. uh, And I know this was his number one, of course. Yeah, he's probably Um, watching it. That is a cool right now. Thinking about how he can add it to his wall of Boba Fett. He's like, he's texting me as we speak. (laughs) Do you you want that one? It's very clean. He's not that far from just going, just, just. Let me just let me have it. You guys, you won't appreciate it like I would. Just Dan, your Boba Fett's. I'll trade you for a snow speeder. Apparently, I'm 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 open for that. So you know, let's talk. <laughs> Dang it! That's how you should have got your blue snaggle tooth. You <laughs> no. ruined it again. You messed up. No, 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 no. You had a second chance. <laughs> You'll never get that blue snaggle tooth back. <laughs> I know. He's yeah. gonna. I'm I'm waiting till he cracks a thousand because I think he's over six hundred now. <clears throat> He must be over. Yeah. Six. I know he did that five. I think he did a photo with them. I would love to do. I don't know if I How would you about stage because I've, I've seen him a hundreds times. of Boba Fett's. If you were if you were staging the photo of hundreds of Boba Fett's. Um, well, first of all, I'd have a very sticky surface or I'd use a lot of tack <laughs> to make them stand up because <laughs> I would love to have them like alternate um, sort of a diamond pattern going back into infinity. You know, just just get them all in the shot or as many as possible going back into just into infinity would be amazing with 500. It's it's good. I think it would make an incredible poster. Uh, I'd would love you, to do it. I'd love would to you it. shoot at an angle or would you have a raked surface? That they were staged on uh, a down angle, probably a slight bird's eye, like uh, maybe a 30 degree angle down on top of them. I don't know. It depends. I mean, with 500 of them, I don't know what it's going to look like. I mean, you're probably not going to get all 500 of them in there, but it'd be cool if you could. No, <laughs> if you could actually count the requirement all is them, you have amazing. to get all 500 in the photo. <laughs> all 500. Otherwise, what's at least the point? a shoulder. You got you got to know right, this, get enough. a sense the scale of it. That's true. That's true. I mean, once you get past a certain <laughs> cool. point. You know how you know you, I'm assuming you're you're having to light that that back because you don't want them to just fade into infinity because you want to do have a sense of them still being individual figures back there. I could see it fading into a, a darker, not not into just complete darkness, but it, as as they go back, getting a little more in shadow. Um, maybe highlighting one in the middle, like his favorite or his first one, like you know, dead center in the shot or something like that. Because it's hard to, obviously, with 5 POA, you know, really, there's not a lot of posing options. But if the no, straight if up the request down. was, yeah. I want it, I don't want it to be like it's laid out in a regiment. Like, I don't want, you know, the, the Death Star uh, lineup. I would love it to be dynamic. Oh. Hmm. How would you hmm. stagger in stage that? Knowing he can fly uh-huh. too, you have you have three dimensions you can work in. Dan can fly. Oh, no, <laughs> Dan can probably fly <laughs> at this point. Um, Dan's got a, a Boba Fett back. Yeah, that could be right cool. Now. That that opens up some possibilities. I mean, you're going to need a little more Photoshop with that. But have, having having him again, like spread out into the distance, and having a few of them in various states of like taking off, you know what I mean, would be kind of cool too. Landing. I don't know. Lots of different ways. Yeah. Sure. Well, there Not you go. There's, there's the big challenge for uh, for its with well, the next milestone that he comes across. Maybe the right. big the, talk to him about the that. big boba shoot. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I wonder. I don't. I'm not sure he would let those out of his sight enough for me to like to send them to me to put put them in my studio. I'm well, this sure. this needs to be like you probably big, have to be here. With yeah, them. this is a big collab. You'll have to go on site. You have right. to spend a bunch of time. Probably. Uh, just you locked up in a studio. There's a documentary in this. All I'm saying is the, the Boba <laughs> Shoot documentary. Or a crime mystery, one of the two. I'm not sure. <laughs> Completely forgot he was in that warehouse. We got to check in on That's him. Right. Did anyone leave just, any food? Oh, my God. <laughs> I've been eating Boba Fett's. <laughs> yeah, right. Just like my mouth is blue <laughs> yes. and red and yellow. Where are my Boba Fett's? Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> Let's talk about it. I did take a photo of the last one just so you can have it. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> so, so so that was a we've a, devolved. So you said your number one was a solid number one, was never not gonna be your Oh yeah. One. All right. You wanna edge down Boba for a minute here and I will Yep. I will go get it. Uh so while he is going to get that, I will remind everyone, please uh, hit the like and subscribe if you like the show, which I hope you do. Uh, uh, that would be a swell thing. There's links also in the bottom to stuff like Patreon and Amazon Wishlist and uh, all the stuff that I do. And more uh, importantly, right now, you can go to One Six Shooters, all his information for his Instagram and his YouTube channel. You'll find all that below. And you should. And you should subscribe and follow and do all the things that you're supposed to do and, and all that. So I'm going to repeat most of this at the end of the show as well. But now, look at I me. I vamped and... long enough. I was going to try and bring this over without the stand. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah, let me see if I can get it off the stand because you can't really see it. Please don't drop it. <laughs> I try not to touch this thing. I, I dust it constantly and clean and this it. This is why you um, bought the air purifier. This... Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, this is a full-size Ralph McQuarrie wearable, quote-unquote, it's not very comfortable, helmet. Um, one of 250 made uh, with a plaque signed by Ralph McQuarrie. Uh, it was made back when he was still alive. He kind of quote unquote supervised it. I, I mean, I think he probably just came by and said, yeah, that looks great. Um, but yeah, it's one of my, this is something I never thought I'd own. These things go for uh, a lot of money. <laughs> um, I'm not even gonna uh, tell you how much. Is that master replicas or is that post master replicas? This is, um, I think this is master replicas. I think that's who put this out, yeah. Concept helmet, Ralph McQuarrie collection. God, I don't even remember. I think it is uh, Master Replicas, though. So that's the RMQ. That's the signature. So <clears throat> I never thought I'd own it because I, I wasn't going to spend the kind of money that uh, that they go for. Um, as much as I loved it, and as as much as I've spent a little money on on stupid thing or stupid money on on cool things, um, it was on eBay for <laughs> about a third of the going price that they usually go for uh which was still a lot of money but more reasonable and acceptable and i just i couldn't pass it up like i just i couldn't knowing you'd never get that opportunity up. again never get that opportunity again it was it was never going for that i had my doubts i was i was worried i mean is this for real i talked to the guy i went back and forth with him and i was i was worried about losing it because uh was it know, an auction or a buy price, it i couldn't believe it I think it was an auction and I think I won the auction. I don't think there was a buy it now option. I don't did, remember, did, actually, did the price but, go um, up in auction? Were you with someone else out there? There really wasn't anybody else. Going so you just hit it. that sweet why. spot that sometimes happens on eBay where no never one's looking happens at me. the one time that you're looking <laughs> and you find the thing. Never happens to me, never. And it happened, uh, which was incredible. Um, and I, I, get, uh, I mean, one of the first I, things I got to ask you about yeah. eBay, because I've had this debate with a okay. friend of mine. Sure. If I'm okay. if I find something I like on eBay. Yep. I, I, I don't bid on it. I wait into the last six mm -hmm. seconds. Yeah. And that's when I put my thing. My friend yeah. will just as soon as he sees it, put a bid and walk away <laughs> and well, i don't understand hmm. the strategy of you've alerted everyone else who's interested in it <laughs> that that you're right. out there and that right. they're going to have to fight right. for it so the price is automatically mm -hmm. going to go up beyond what you put in there because now you've you've yeah. triggered the bidding war at that point I'm fine. It with doesn't make much at the sense. Very end, if someone else happens to bid in the last two seconds, right? As I'm snipes you out of it. Yeah, right. Um, but I don't yeah, want to. That's let always them know. been my strategy. 
that I'm there. Yeah, that's always been my strategy. I think if it's like something that you know is going to, be, you know, have <coughs> a bidding war, um, that's the strategy. If it's just something like, hey, I'd like to get this. This would be cool. I don't think there's going to be a lot of people. And I, I understand people's wanting to put just a maximum bid and say, hey, this is all I'm willing to pay for it. And I'm going to put it in there and then I'm going to walk away. And if I don't get it, I don't get it. I'll try it again. That's the of the universe. Yeah. I'm going to, if I'm meant to have this thing. Yeah. No, I don't, I don't, I don't follow that. I can't. I'm I'm going to fight for this thing. I can't do it. I'm like, let me bid on your things for you. Just give me your account and I will get this thing for you because you don't know how to do this. It frustrates me that you're not going to get this thing for the price you want to get it at because you're tipping your hand ahead of time. Yeah, it, it just it just yeah. makes me mad and sad. I just needed but to. But then you do have to go in and snipe with your highest bid because if you're going to snipe, you know, I, you know somebody go... else is sitting there at the same second hitting, you know, the button or has somehow gotten in past your last five second bid. And, and I always go you, so. with an odd number. Like my yeah. my my yeah. bid will be instead of like a dollar fifty over never go even dollar fifty seven. Right, fifteen more 74. likely to put like three dollars, <laughs> and if I put exactly. three fifty one, yep, then I don't yep. feel bad if I don't get it. <laughs> You're always disappointed right. when you don't get a thing, but at mm-hmm. least I know I tried, and I tried to be strategic about it, not just this devil may yep. care approach to eBay. I know. It's, that... Yeah, I know. <laughs> Whatever, <laughs> I get it. If it's meant to be, it's meant to be. Yeah. But certainly, and I know yeah, that no, feeling this... of things like that, when you see a thing that is a grail that you never expected to see for that price, and the first thought is always, what's wrong with it? <laughs> yeah. why, why is it this low? Yeah. Is an arm That's broken? That's what I was afraid of. Is it missing bits? Mm-hmm. Does it not have a box? Does it? What What are the things? Yeah. Is there a massive scratch? No, he told me the that there was a small ding in the corner of the base which is literally a piece of wood. If I wanted to replace that, I could replace it. Um, but no issues with the helmet. But he that's, showed all the pictures. No issues with the helmet. It, he he said it. Had, oh, yeah. He said he claims it had never been out of the box. And it, all the all the, the, the ceiling was on the, the base and all the packing was still around the helmet as if it had never been removed. So I don't think it had been removed. So that was just um, a production except, issue of, for that base. It might have been a production issue or something like that. But... Um, it doesn't really detract from it, and I don't care. <laughs> it's so gorgeous. when you, when it it's finally arrives, and you're unboxing mm-hmm. that, and all of your fears about what could be wrong with it are are proven unfounded. You're, you 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 mm-hmm. now have that thing, and mm-hmm. what what is your feeling in that moment, knowing that oh this is now mine, I got it. I still couldn't believe it. Like you know, you still you're like there's something, I'm missing something. Something's wrong. And of course, now that little chip in the wood is like, I really got to fix that. <laughs> or do you? Because it's perfect otherwise. No, I don't. It's fine. <laughs> it's still it's still on there. Uh, I haven't even taken the plastic wrap off the base, honestly, but um, I will at some point. I just have to get it a more permanent home down here. And you wore um, it at least once. Yeah, I just... You, did, you put it on, right? At least once? I tried, but it is not comfortable, and I did not want to do anything to it. So uh, I didn't even want to try to put the you know, the hood on the back because I was afraid I would misalign it and it would fall and crack or something like it's just it's too yeah too right. much or you could have what nearly happened to me with master replicas uh they sent me a phase one clone trooper helmet when they put those out and maybe 2007 mm-hmm. when they those came out and I put it on yeah because I was taking a photo for the review and it is a lot of foam padding inside and super tight. Okay. And mm-hmm. without me knowing. Oh, it, no. I it, see this coming. <laughs> it formed a seal, and I took a breath in and nearly burst my eardrums <laughs> because oh, it had geez. formed a seal. <laughs> oh, my God. And I was always wary about helmets after that because you never know. So yeah, be careful. That's a fear, a too. Yeah, up. that's a fear for sure. That Absolutely you never even think fear. about yep. until it nearly happens. So be super yep. careful, kids. Yep. When you're putting yeah. on ridiculously expensive prop helmets. Especially if you're claustrophobic. You, um, you will, this was you EFX, by the it. way. 
It was okay. So EFX yeah. were the ones EFX. that came right after mm-hmm. Master right. Replicas lost yep. their company. In fact, I think mm-hmm. it was Refugees from Master Replic- Replicas that started EFX as like the follow up company and yeah. sort of picked up those licenses. So, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, yep. But yeah, yeah. two hundred and fifty. Uh... When you start thinking about those <clears throat> runs. And certainly Hot Toys has done 250. What that Wonder Woman, I think they just the Warner Brothers anniversary is like a 250 run. Yeah, I think that was 500, maybe. But to think that there's only like that. 500 in the world, that you only have 500 yeah. chances to have that thing. Only 500 people have that yep. thing. Yep. It, it's weird to yep. think about in the community of collectors. Even something as common as like that Han Solo, quote unquote common. Of Han mm-hmm. and Chewbacca. Yep. Was mm-hmm. at that time maybe what a twenty five hundred run at most? Maybe. Yeah. That Somewhere set? around there, sure. Not yeah. A lot in the grand scheme. No. No. Yep. Uh it's wild, man. It's 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 cool to own something like that. You know what I mean? It makes me nervous <laughs> at the same time. That would be what I would grab over anything else. I just didn't well, want to bring you it up. You wouldn't have to grab it. You'd put <laughs> that on. on. And you still have two hands. I would put it on and grab everything else. Yes, I would. (laughs) Yes. The fire department would be here. They'd see a man coming out with a dark helmet on and multiple small heads in his hands. And that's how you Uh, make it quite a sight. That's right. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) Exactly. Uh, So Vader saves toys. This is. This is all. I actually have a behind the scenes on my on my uh, Instagram page. If you want to go take a look at it, the making of this. So that is the. I had to make. That's the helmet. So that's the helmet. I had to make the body parts um, out of foam and uh, cloth and you still have them? Know, tin. I think. Do they, do they hold up? No, I, no. I threw them all out. They were all very like uh, just, temporary just for the things shoes. that didn't look very good. Yeah. If you got real close, you could you could see the details and and uh, you know they weren't they weren't high quality. They were quality enough to to shoot and clean up a little bit in Photoshop. But uh, yeah, really really happy with that. Something. I always wanted to do was that uh, that cover, uh, which was the cover that I had on my on my novelization. So, so have you made that? Is that available as a print that folks can get? Yeah, that's actually I think that's up on Etsy. Got to be careful on Etsy with some of the uh, Star Wars stuff. They uh, they tend to frown upon that. But uh, if you when, come to a show, I have them. <laughs> well, particularly with something like that that looks so indistinguishable unless you actually look at it like again my first glance would have been oh yeah that's just the artwork you did that good yeah on capturing it yeah it's interesting they had a contest i mean they didn't um obviously they didn't expect you to sell anything um but they did have a, a like a photo contest a few years ago like a fan channel not fan channel but a fan awards as they i think it's the only time they ever did it um and I won for another shot that I did uh, recreating the um, the Hildebrandt poster um, and uh, got a little trophy for that. That was really cool. Um, but yeah, they didn't have any problem with you doing it <laughs> and, and displaying it publicly, which is actually illegal as well. But um, yeah, selling it, selling it's a different thing. Disney doesn't like that. So if you were to fill out your collection of those Macquarie figures, yeah, you see yourself doing a full series of recreating the Macquarie paintings using the figures. I have done. Uh, besides that one, I have done the Tauntaun shot, an homage to it. it. Is an exact replication of the the wide scene shot, but I used the same lighting that he did. Um, and I'm I'm working on doing the snow speeder. Uh, shot with the uh, the uh, adats in the background, AT-80s in the background, um, coming at Luke, and Luke is outside the the snow speeder. Um, so yeah, I I want to do I want to do a lot more of those original concepts, like the obviously that concept Vader, the uh, Vader Obi Wan fight concept art. I would love now to that do we that. have those black series love figures. Yeah, um, they look okay. <laughs> they're, yeah, they're not they, the greatest well, thing in the world. They're, they're, I have they're them. They're very kit bashed versions of putting together. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would love to get the the Star Killer um 
figure, but those, though. But, the, but those uh, 30th anniversary collection ones are a lot more accurate. Are they? Those are yeah. unique sculpts to pull those off. Yeah. And th those are fairly articulate, well articulated, too, right? You yeah. Can do some yeah. Stuff with those. yeah. They're certainly not 5 yeah. POA. They're, yeah. uh, I mean, they're basically that 30th anniversary line. A lot of that stuff made it into the first TVC lines. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, they have elbows, knees. <laughs> All right, Ken, you're talking me into it, man. That's what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. <laughs> All be, I'm saying uh, is you day. start down that path. What would be the first one you do? Which would, As far as prioritizing the figures you would get or have already, what would mean the most to you as far as that early, early concept, not finalized design work to... Yeah, I think of the Vader. I, I have the sideshow statue of the Vader. Like I said, I have the, um, the uh, five POA giant, gentle giant of the Vader. I have a, a couple other. I have pops of that two different designs of the but you don't Macquarie have a 30th Vader. Anniversary so I probably one? get the Vader. Yeah. I don't. That one no. is easier to get. That and that Obi-Wan yeah. are not. I mean, the Obi-Wan okay. is more expensive than the the Vader because you yeah. get the Obi-Wan the two-pack with the Yoda. They had, a whole, they had a whole set of them at the store down the street from me, and I, I sat there and looked at it. They wanted too much for it, but I probably should have paid it anyway. Um it's probably I one of those things sense. if you pieced it out what indiv each individual figure cost broken out. Yeah. It probably was a decent price. But when you see that sticker shock was. of 200 bucks yeah, for it probably a, was. a stack of figures, yeah. like, oh, you can get it was stupid. It was there money. forever. Nobody wanted it. I probably could have said, <laughs> hey, I'll give you X for it. And they probably would have said, sure. And I, I just never did. All I know stupid. is that when you bid, Living last, nice. last six seconds. You... <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> The thing nah, is, now I'm you're going to be hurrying up and trying to get by it now is before this thing goes live and everyone goes, I'd like to get one of those too. Yeah, I'm doing it tonight. I'm, that's what I'm doing <laughs> until about midnight tonight, actually, is I'm going to be searching for all those at this point. I can't wait to see the photo. <sighs> Damn it, Ken. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> they're all good. They're, <laughs> I know they are. They're too good. They the fact that they did that line, like I would love, Yeah. like that's the one thing I don't see like a modern Hasbro doing we don't get deep dives i don't know why i don't know why i guess i guess maybe the audience for that although i think even the younger people who grew up on the prequels still know that that was an inspiration for a lot of those designs and know who he was um i still think it would sell i still think it would sell i wish i'd love 5 poa so i'd love the retro carded backs with all those figures you know and like the the original kenner look oh, that would be incredible incredible it uh i'm still shocked even though as we said you know there was a lot of reuse in them that that two-pack yeah. came out like that was a thing. yeah yeah and it was a suit what it was a parks exclusive uh disney yes yeah so. it's gonna be yeah the, you know it's all the new tooling that they'd have to do for that they can't reuse you reuse any parts so but now yeah. if they were to, to be uh, you know, uh, uh, more fidelity in realizing it. They have the heads done. Now they just need to do the bodies. So they actually did do yeah. part of the new tooling to do True. a more accurate version of both of those if they True. were to tackle it. True. Uh, yep. But yeah, no, no, it would be... Hot Toys too. Least, I would buy all those in Hot Toys. The droids would be nice. I love I, it. Uh, Hot Toys, I'm shocked yeah. that they haven't done it. Although, have, put that out to the universe. All the third-party producers out there now start start doing some yeah. McCory concept that Jesus. even for those third party as bold as they are would never touching do. star wars and marvel no, would is be very dangerous marvel it yeah. seems like they have it's... no issue touching now marvel seems like it's, it's <sighs> to some degree it's, but yeah yeah it seems that way uh, i mean i think even the like the Certainly chinese the Disney plus kind of cracked down it seems like yeah. well we got yeah, like, yeah. kingpin and they, they've gone... kingpin is great too you have the kingpin i saw a review of that yeah it's very good very good what is your favorite yeah. third party really, thing really that's out now what's the thing that surprised you the mo <sighs> most as being and the third party stuff a lot of it is cheaper than hot toys as well right oh yeah well i mean you know but they're not playing licensing. they're not paying any licensing <laughs> fees <laughs> yeah <laughs> two incredible things that have come out in the last two years susu toys did a roar shark um from watchmen um they're doing they continue with that line slowly i'm hoping we'll get everything from that because i love that movie and i love that comic book um but uh i'll, I'll pull it out over here um 
this I've got the 66 Batman and Robin this Cesar Romero Joker is absolutely stunning <laughs> for a third party comedy and this is one of three sculpt head sculpts that you get um, for like less it was less than $200 or just over $200 three sculpts tons of accessories the tailoring um, looks it's great. incredible Tailoring looks really good. Yeah, I mean, this is a third-party company. You don't really expect it to be all that nice, but it's very, very good. No big stitches or anything. It's. Do we know who these? This was uh, is? my is figures. This, is this just like a shell company for Hot Toys to put out all of the stuff that they can't get the license for? <laughs> do we do we even know who these companies are? Because they seem to pop up overnight. Yeah. And they and they and they change their up. names constantly. Yeah. Yeah, they're fully tooled yeah. up and ready to go, and they seem to know how to pull it off. Yeah. So that's not an easy thing. Hot to do Toys overnight. had shown this, and in a in a, at a show, and then decided to after the the sixty six didn't sell well, even as great as those figures are. Um, yeah, kind of end the line, I guess. Their ropes for the past six. Seven oh, years. nice, nice. That's the way to go. They're in full. Climbing I want to have mode. them climbing up my. Yeah, yeah. That's what I want to do. Um, and it looked good, but I think this is as good, if not better. All these and these are all original sculpts. They didn't like recast these or anything like that. They. It's all new, man. Incredible. I wish they could get this kind of license, these companies. You know what I mean? Yeah, where's our penguin? Have then again, the penguin yet? Where's our they have Paradise? showed it. Uh, they've showed prototypes of it, and it looks very good. They did do a Frank Gorshin Riddler, which I think I have coming, uh, which was pretty good. Not as good as this, but pretty good. Um, yeah, I'm waiting for the. And now we're moving down the tier. So who, the, who after that? Do you want Julie Newmar? Side? Julie, Julie Newmar. Newmar. Yeah, yeah. Have they done sure. uh, any of these Catwoman? No, nope. yeah. no Catwoman. No, they're moving very slowly on this line. I'm not really sure what's going on. I hope that the Penguin is coming out, and they're still going to move forward with it because it's great. Uh, and I did go out and buy this uh, company called Jazz Inc., uh, who does have the license to do some Batman vehicles, and they did a one six uh, sixty six Batmobile, which I I ended up picking up. Um, I did, Batman. That's 66 Batman, man. That was like, my father used to make fun of me um, for thinking it was so cool because like, he's like, you know, it's supposed to be campy. He's like, you know, those are all like, yeah, but, you know, uh, B and C actors who are like it, taking these roles to kind of like do this funny cameo. I'm like, dude, it's the coolest thing on TV. It's, it's the only also, superhero I got yeah, in live action of, right now besides cartoons, Spider-Man. That's all we had. <laughs> We our, our yeah, pickings yeah. were limited. That's why the Incredible Hulk show was as popular as it was, and why yeah. it has maintained. The Hulk was incredible. Spider Man, that that cheesy Spider Man with the rope. But it was Spider Man. Incredible. It existed. You had you had a live act for for us who who loved yeah. superhero stuff. Talking about toy figure lines, did you like the only offerings we had were what superpowers? After Mego was gone in the eighties, yep. all we had was superpowers, superpowers and the Secret Wars line. As yep. far as comic book lines, that's it. that's it. All we had, those were our options, that's it. and I loved having both yep. of those. Yeah, uh, I didn't get into those. I did pick up like some of the Toy Biz uh, X Men and stuff like that when they came out a little later. Again, not great figures, but like cool representation. By the time those the, came you know, out, they were fully aware that they were catering to now kids in their twenties who yeah. <laughs> desperately exactly. wanted the deep dive of those characters. And, right. you know, yes, there were Toys R Us's. Yes, they were on pegs in stores. But they knew that those also were going to be in comic book shops, would stock those things oh, sure. and cater to the people oh, yeah. who knew those characters. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Now I'm just remembering. And those 20 year olds are now 45 and they're still buying. Still buying the same things. <laughs> and they, they want even the, more. Yeah. <laughs> over and, buying, and over you know, their, and over again. They're incredibly yellowed Iceman from that Toy Biz line. <laughs> That's and right. his little ice ramp. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I do. I do sometimes miss little play feature things like that. Like hot toys. Play set give, stuff. Give, is, us, give we, us play features. I know. Give us the weather vane. Give I us know. little little diorama things to fill things little out. Punching action, something you know here or there. You Can know? you imagine <laughs> having a three hundred dollar hot toy and you're squeezing the legs together for it to move its arms? <laughs> You pinch the back and it goes up. I mean, that, that was my biggest disappointment from that, <laughs> that Indiana Jones jumbo fig that 
uh, Gentle Giant just put out. Oh, yeah. That it doesn't have yeah. the whip action for the arm. The whip action, right. <laughs> I on, missed guys. that one. That's another one I got to get. Damn it. Ken, you're costing me a lot of money tonight. <laughs> are you, now, are you making the choice? Are you getting the carded one or are you getting the map room recreation one that comes with the. Oh, uh, I remember I saw the, the map Kenner room map recreation room, so. one. I don't think I need that. I think I could get the carded one. I, I just kind of like the, the look on the card. I think that's Do you have enough. the sideshow th- map room diorama for your 12 inch? I don't. Um, I don't. Have you? Yeah, that... Stop, Ken. <laughs> that I do have. That I, I very lucky. Oh, have. nice. Oh, and it is. I've looked. I'll have to send you I've the photo. Out in the past. That's the one. I don't know if you you have this because you well you have the air purifier. It helps out <laughs> mm-hmm. with a lot of it. Some of my yeah. rooms I don't. Uh, and the map room and the the indie the map room indie because I have an indie that's just dedicated to being the map room one. I don't dust because <laughs> so it's, it's authentic looking. It, it looks authentic. as if the desert yeah, sands exactly. have the, uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Perfect. You know, sometimes that's I, meant I treat, to be there. That's I treat like the R2 and the C3PO that way too. It's like, eh, it's sure. supposed to be a little bit dusty. Yeah, it's weathered. Yeah. It's weathered. <laughs> exactly. The atmosphere. It's all oh, atmosphere. Good times. Uh, did you have any exactly. honorable mentions? that didn't quite make the list or any that uh, you want um, that are still no, special I'm, I'm to you? I'm very happy with this. You know, uh, David Prowse signed oh. Vader picture, which my brother got me for Christmas a couple years ago. Um, very cool. I've got, a, I got a bunch of signatures from people on some now, now questionable, not questionable. They were good. I, I had done some pictures of the hot toys, like of, of Luke Skywalker and Boba Fett, and I had Jeremy Bullock sign the Boba Fett one. Uh, I had um, um, what's his name sign the Darth Maul one that I did. That was a pretty good picture, actually. Ray Park. I, I'm a little Ray Park, and I, I'm he was cool. He's cool as hell too. Um, I'm a like little got, sad that James I didn't Sarah have something. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm a little Finowitz. sad that I didn't have something like this for them all to sign, like you know, collectively, but. It's still cool. So those are those are nice memories and and, and cool things to have, I guess. Um, Do you ever? Get yeah, I mean, everything else would be or photos to to the folks. I you know I'm I was gonna do that with Hamill, and I'm like, you know what? He's probably got so much crap that he doesn't want. But he's also he, a collector. You know what I mean, I know, I know. And if he does, he I know he's not doing as many shows anymore. But if he does do you know celebration down the line or something else, and I do happen to go there, I think I will. Give him something small. And you'd have that so moment. That can, oh, I love this. You know. This is great. Thank you. Oh, yeah. look at this photo, everybody. <laughs> so <laughs> that's pretty good. That's pretty good. When I saw him, it was at Celebration, and he had, he was just about to go on. I think he had done, um, a, a, I think he had done a talk, and he lost his voice. And then he had to go and do another talk right after the signing that I was on. So he was not saying anything to anyone and like when i handed him the picture he goes because they were like please don't you know talk to mr hamill or make him talk his voice is you know shot i didn't say anything to him i just handed him the picture and it was i'll, I'll send it to you what it, what it was later but he he just looks at it and he goes I, i've never seen this before <laughs> like <laughs> i'm like no i know it's your it's your hot toy it's a picture i took of your hot toy he's like and he signed it <laughs> that's it that was it <laughs> He was laughing. He's like, I've, I've never seen this before. See? Well, now I'm sure you've seen everything. <laughs> you know? Now now you have to plan for this because you can you can see this video, know that there's the potential is coming. Oh, what sure. if you were shooting a new photo specifically mm. to give him of what's mm. available, what would you shoot? It would you have said, to be a brand new photo. Because you yes. Because you said you're not oh, terribly oh. happy with the the farm boy luke well these exists these were old no it was good it was just an old shot i i would definitely do something like this but i would probably jeez i don't know i don't know what the hell i'd do and which era of luke is maybe like a like what is your favorite luke oh man that's a good question too probably probably return of the jedi luke um but i still like farm boy luke it just he had more to you know it was he was a little more 
involved and you know with the lightsaber and everything in in uh, jedi um i like bespin luke too but just the just the black robes and stuff so cool what's the what's the <clears throat> i probably do something like that what's the best hamel likeness that's out there as far as you're concerned well i actually have a i actually have a custom for those as well the hamel <laughs> ones but in terms of um the new the new Bespin one is pretty good, and I think a lot of people like that uh, Mandalorian Jedi one. Although I thought that they relied too much on the CGI for that one. Didn't um, they do the but in hand, it looks better. For the Jedi Luke. Isn't yes, and that looks pretty good. Confrontation. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, yeah, that one that one is decent. I gotta say that was that that's probably my favorite. I, I would guess. That's Although the ones that no, I'm so the best sad I missed out on was that Return yeah, of the, the Jedi Luke. Yeah, that is a good one. The best one is probably actually again, uh, Hermit Luke, Old Man Luke. It's probably the Hermit one from Octo. It's, it's great. It's really, that I do. Really that I do have. Luckily, uh, it mm -hmm. is so great to just have him on the shelf judging you, <laughs> because he's a very judging Luke. He just stares at you with such disappointment in his eyes. I know, but he looks like Aqualung, so who cares? Like it's yeah. like, well, you got I, nothing on listen, me, man. I'm just you, disappointed you, Jedi, in you. you know what you did. It's fine. <laughs> it's right. It's right. It's right. So, hey, I love Judgy Luke. Just, just right. sit, yeah. You, you got a choices. Dollar. We all do. <laughs> That's right. Uh, and the robes are great yeah, on that. There he is. There he is. <laughs> well, we have uh, uh, the yeah. quick rankings. So we did that with Luke. Okay. Uh, yep. Your favorite Leia. Hot toys. Or any, anything. Any, any Leia. Toys. Yeah. Six scale. I still think this one is uh, probably the best one out there. Um, this is a again a custom dress, but as as you know as old as this is, I mean it's not that old, but it came out with that Luke that isn't very good and the Han that isn't very good. This is a great likeness. I really, really love this likeness. Uh, the if they reissued this and gave me the same sculpt, I know. Yeah, I know. Uh, um, I'm looking at it. That's over on my desk right now, sitting off to the side. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't hate having that sculpt again if they reissued it. I mean, it's it's a great sculpt. It's, it's for me. It's ninety eight percent there. Neck and neck with that and the the Hoth, Leia. Hoth is very good too. Yeah, that is that is a very good likeness too. Yeah. yeah. Right yeah that's very good too yep something about the eyes that um it's very close it's very very close that, that also is from that era it is very good when, when hot toys was doing that sort of middle distance posing or that middle distance uh eyes that they did like the ray yeah. from that era is very much that too yeah uh everything everything has movable eyes now that would be incredible i mean to get that either one of those layers now again with movable eyes would be amazing that would be that would be fantastic. It's, Hopefully that I, will happen. I would we'll love see. to again. There's their process. <clears throat> I would love to know how they yeah. choose what gets reissued, what doesn't. I don't know. We just give us new heads. Just I can't... give us the heads. Just give us just sell the heads separately for all these. Yeah, that's it. I've been saying that forever. Uh, we've been saying that on the show. Give us accessory packs. Give us a head. I will pay. People will pay a hundred and let's say one hundred twenty-five dollars for a new yeah, sculpt. Rather than just for the sculpt for a brand new figure. And... Right, but all they have to produce is a sculpt. Yeah, and the market you know what I mean? is there. I know, yes, it's expensive, but um, right, it, it is there. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's going to yeah. be more expressions durable than what the customizers can do because resin is inherently fragile. At right. this point, even your your best resins are going to yeah. have issues. I mean, honestly, one hundred and fifty dollars is a bargain. Because I mean, if you're going to buy a custom sculpt, it's going to cost you now. Nowadays, they're like eighty bucks to a hundred bucks, and then to have somebody paint it is two hundred dollars at least. So you're talking about a three, three hundred fifty dollar investment for a head. Yeah, <clears throat> and which, they which could you easily charge you one hundred fifty bucks. Be terrified mass produced that about incredible. anything happening to that. Oh yeah, for that kind of investment. That's why I would grab them in a fire. Exactly. That's that's why they're. Like I can just imagine how delicately you even put that on the body, just like. Oh yeah, there's plenty of tack <laughs> there. There's plenty of tack. Don't want that. To I've had it happen. There, yeah, no, they're absolutely not. Uh, or realizing that the the skin color was just slightly off from the neck. 
and all that. That can be a problem too. Yeah, if you depending on the painter, if you don't give them the right uh, materials, you really have to send the bodies off if they don't have the same figure that you have to to test it by. Because <laughs> yeah, that can be a real bummer when you get it in hand. And you're like, ah. Oh. I mean, you you obviously done the indie. You said you've done the Luke's. You've done Han. Is yep. there any that you haven't quite pulled the trigger on yet? As far as I really want to get a custom head of that, but I'm just you keep putting it off. Uh, I do have. I actually have the. This is the one that everybody's looking for too uh, to come out pretty soon. But this is my custom Bespin. Um, so this is same sculpt that's on the original Han with just different hair. It it's pretty good. I mean, it's I could see Hot Toys beating this at some point with the sculpt anyway. Um, let's see. I think Lando's pretty good. I don't think I would redo Lando. Tarkin's excellent. Um, Another one that I heartbroken that I missed as far as characters that I yeah. had. Tarkin and the Krennic. I missed out on. Krennic is well. great. I love Krennic. Well, rub it in. Um, <laughs> Sorry, man. Hey, listen, awful. you're Tell you're me costing awful. me money on eBay. I'm just giving it back to you. <laughs> <laughs> I Luke, I haven't really. There, I have a custom Luke head. Same guy who did the Han sculpt. It wasn't the same level of quality. So yeah, I would love somebody to give me. I do have a couple of uh, like I'm talking about Farm Boy Luke. Um, right. The Jedi ones I have are pretty good, but uh, yeah, Farm Boy Luke would be great. And I um, always forget, even though I also have it, that they did do an Obi Wan. From a new hope like for some reason i never yeah. think about that and yet it's sitting right behind me and i just don't even think that that's a thing that they did and as good as that sculpt is i still people argue with me about this all the time i still think it has flaws and uh this is my custom sculpt which i just think is uh i don't know why those shadows are there it's not that dark <laughs> under his cheeks but um so I, I just think up, this is but... this is a much better <laughs> sculpt but, but that, that also is still good. has that from that era thing. that weird sort of uh, uh, dark skin color, sort of deep tan thing they had going on for a while. Yeah, it's weird. It's like their lights weren't bright enough over there or something. Like he is an, an old Englishman. Really sure. He is very, very pale. He's... <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Obi-Wan for living on Tatooine Reddish. had not seen a lot of sun. <laughs> that's true, yeah. That's it. Well, that's what the hood's for, right? I mean, that's what you do when you're out there. Well, you've got to protect it. <laughs> that's right that's right uh this has been a delight to have you on the show and i appreciate you doing it and i'm sorry Thank you. i appreciate you having me here this is great sorry you didn't meet robo's uh uh record or mike case's record <laughs> please that's okay <laughs> they're, they're like, better man than i they're four better hours, man than i am we can certainly make a run no, at it i no. <laughs> i mean i could but no <laughs> my yeah. wife will kill me uh tell everyone where they can and should find you and anything you want to plug uh because you, you you do a lot and you've done a lot uh yeah sure uh instagram you can find the the photography on one six underscore shooter um on youtube it's one six shooter as well on youtube i have uh, a bunch of tutorials for toy photography some behind the scenes breakdowns uh some reviews with a shoot as well so i'll review the figure and then and then shoot it um photograph it that is not shoot it um i've got uh, a a monthly show called toy photography bomb best of the month uh which will be our next show is tomorrow on the fifth um and we go through the some of the best toy photography out there uh from different artists uh me and myself and a guest artist um and legions lounge if you're into mythic legions um i do all their photography for them and the one six pack which you'll see all all this stuff on and all this inane talk about hairlines and gel and stuff like that that's what we do as one six figure collectors we're insane <laughs> <laughs> but you, there wouldn't be an issue if they just get it right the first time that's right damn it yeah. <laughs> but ken thank you man uh, this is great uh, it's a real honor to be uh, invited on uh, i appreciate it Thank you for doing it. And all the, the links that you discussed will be in the description down below so people can can find all those links there as well. And should go follow you and do all those things. And if you enjoy this video all or the series, all the episodes we've done, all the other shows like this are open chat. Uh, another show that's launching soon. 
that is going to be a spinoff of this that will not be Star Wars specific, but have some amazing guests that I can't wait to tell people about uh, from various uh, segments of the entertainment industry. And we're going to be talking about some of their favorite things. Uh, that's coming up soon. You can cool. like, subscribe, go to Patreon, be a patron there. Uh, there's some uh, brand new interviews I've been doing from my archives uh, from uh, from folks that have not run for 20 years and just been sitting in the vault that I'm remastering and making available to folks. So you can go find those things there. Amazon wish list is there if you just want to send me some dumb things that we'll talk about in these shows. That also is there. But thank you for watching. I appreciate you all. Trevor, I appreciate you being here and doing this. And I really hope you get that blue snaggle tooth back. You have his name. <laughs> you need to find him. This is going to happen. David Carr. Wow. And you need to find where the snowspeeder is. You got to you got to find right. out where the snowspeeder is so you can make the trade back. You know what? Just just say that your parents said you couldn't make the trade and see if it sticks. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they're in their seventies now, and they just came to him. They were like, you know what? You, you know tell what they... that young David Carr to give you back his, your snaggletooth and you didn't him back even your... ask us you didn't even ask i know exactly you can't do you spent that good money on that back in 1979 whatever the hell that was yeah <laughs> there needs to be some kind of law grandfathered into all of us who are, are now grandfather age <laughs> dealing with That's that right. <laughs> uh thank exactly. you all for watching see you next time on force five bye everybody